Hello, hello. Good afternoon, everyone. A very happy Easter to you all, and thank you for coming along to our live stream today with me, 320 Sim Pilot, as we take the Twin Otter for a bit of a jolly around the Canary Islands. I thought it would be just a bit of fun. Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah, so that sums up the start of the uh, <laughs> how the stream intends to go on. Um, yeah, we're just going to enjoy it. We're going to do a bit of cruising around. We have the Orbex scenery. We have the RW design. Uh, twin otter dhc6 so it's a very versatile airplane something a bit different we've used it once on the channel so far so i thought it'd be good fun to give it another go and let me just check that my audio is working for you guys i think it is good stuff yeah so uh, we're going to give it a bit of a spin and uh, what we'll be doing today is lots of sectors so we're doing three different flights over the day they're all very short so don't worry it won't be too tedious i hope and then we are going to uh yeah give it a bit of a short turnaround at each place get rid of the passengers, get some more on and head out where we're going. Thank you all for coming along. I hope you're all doing very well. Good to see you guys uh, here. Uh, good to see you, uh, Manuel, Ross. I uh, hope you're all doing well. Checkpoint, uh, enjoy your family. Yeah, I appreciate it. it's, it's Easter Sunday, so I'm sure a lot of people uh, can't can't be here today. So uh, yeah, I, I appreciate uh, everyone who, who has come along. Thank you. Rasmus, good to see you. Happy Easter to you. So gosh, wide one ball. Uh, Alan, Ed Has Haslam, good to see you. Andy H1302, good evening to you. Thank you for coming. Uh, yeah, we are indeed back in this water. Oh no, and there is an energy, and <laughs> hopefully they realise. Although we're so small, they might struggle to spot us there. Uh, Matt Olson, Joseph Mitzel, good to see you. Thank you for coming on. Uh, Violin Koala, Captain uh, Panna, Alan Story, I hope you're doing very well as well. Thanks for coming along. Good to see you. Uh, Van Raj, Nick T, GTA, uh, Doctor on board. Uh, yeah, so. We are going to go from, I've got, I've got the routes all written out in front of me. Paperwork becomes my my problem on the, doing multi-sector days. Johannes B, good to see you. Hope you're doing very well. Uh, yeah, so we are going to start off. The route is available, exclamation mark route. I'm hoping Cloudbot wakes up soon enough for you guys. But uh, essentially, we're going to go pretty direct on the routings today. Um, we're, in fact, we're going to uh, La Gomera, where I've never been. It's a very small airport by comparison with no real instrument approaches or anything like that. So we're just going to have a bit of fun as we um, fly visually, really. We have the Orbex scenery, as I was saying, which does cover... I've got the, the one that covers all of the Canaries in X-Plane, which is really quite nice. So as you can see behind us, a bit of a taste. This is the only um, airport that's included with that package, um, which is a bit of a shame, but I suppose it is a lot of <laughs> scenery added in around the areas. Sven, good to see you. Triple Seven as well. And Harry, hope you're all doing well. And Ollie T. Uh, Zibid25, good to see you. Thank you for coming along. Um, so exclamation mark route will give you the route, uh, Rasmus. Lydia, I hope you're doing well. And Will, all is well this Easter. Thanks for coming along. Right. Let us, yeah, I'm hoping, I don't know if anyone is flying along today. Uh, usually not on the Twin Otter streams. It looks like it's pretty uh, pretty quiet. I wonder if that gene will load in. Uh, do we have ATC? Probably not, but I am on VATSIM. So if anyone else wants to fly along or talk on uh, ATC, that will be uh, that will be available. But no, the nearest center is Portugal. They're, they're doing uh, Madeira. Yeah, this airport is great, Michael V. I, I do agree. They've done a great job in uh, on La Palma, where we are starting. So we're going to go from La Palma to the waypoint Goma and then into La Gomera Airport itself just gonna have to fly that visually i suppose so yeah it's good practice for me just to try this out i don't know how it's going to end up so uh, do bear with me today um cold and dark airplane but it will not be like this for long and then we will have a, a warm-up airplane for very short turnarounds as we go the ruby red 787 pilot good to see you it says hi happy easter how are you i fly the 787 in real life excellent 787 looks like a lovely airplane i hope we get a good one in flight simulator so i can try it out one day but the cockpit's very nice in uh, in the, the default microsoft flight simulator one it just doesn't work very well but uh, it does look lovely thanks for coming along swap yes good to see you i hope you're doing well uh, and isaac says nice to see you back in the canaries I was wondering when the next stream here would be yeah i thought we, we still have an airplane our 757 arrived here you, you guys will remember i'm very close to streaming the 757 again but the twin otter just just felt like it needed it skybus is not the right airline as you can see it's a uk registered airplane uh, but we're not going to use the skybus call sign because it's too confusing we're going to go as manta 201 uh, we're going to be the manta aircraft we'll say it's a wet lease <laughs> we just left some old paint on the airplane um, I couldn't find any any liveries really. Uh, I quite like this one, quite smart, but I might have to do a man delivery if we're going to keep using the Twin Otter. Steve says, hi buddy, I am from the Canaries. Uh, what an honor watching you here, thanks. Very welcome, Steve. Yeah, well, I, I have very little facts about the Canaries. I love going to the Canaries. I've been many times, as probably most people who are lucky enough to get that chance in the UK would have been uh, there. They, they, very popular holiday destination um but uh yeah we'll talk a little bit but we're going to start at la palma and go on a little domestic flight as i said to uh, la camera right that's me talking for seven minutes so let's see if we can uh, crack on great thing about this airplane very easy to use you can just you just click down that little door and up it comes and then i can go to toggle checklist 
drag it out of the way. In fact, get rid of it. And let's do the pre-start checklist and you guys can follow through. I don't know how, how clear it is on your screens. Hopefully clear enough. So let us go. This does have RPM um, and it doesn't need mixture because it's a turboprop engine. So we don't have to adjust the mixture. These are just fuel on or offs, but we will reduce the RPM. Yeah, yeah, good question. So control locks off. The Took me ages the first time, but you can just click down here. There we go. That's the control lock out of the way. Parking brake is set. Um, oh, very good question. I've totally forgotten where the parking brake is, but uh, yeah, it is set. If I just, there it is. Yeah, right there. Parking brake is set. Uh, handles are in. That's talking about these uh, fire pull handles. Emergency fuel switches are normal. So unusual design of this airplane means that we have emergency fuel uh, pumps as well. But I'll talk about that. So fuel switches are in normal. Again, for the uh, cutoff fuel selector in normal. It is indeed. Boost pumps off. These boost pumps drive fuel from the tanks, which are in the nose and the tail, up to the engines. It's not got wing fuel tanks. Very unusual. Um, but there we go boost pumps off static source is normal that's actually uh there it is normal pretty gloomy today i hope it uh, brightens up we'll get the lights on in a minute uh, vent fan off that's uh, also i think down uh down here um but we won't be using it is by default off anyway uh, inverter switch select one or two couldn't find the inverter switches we looked last time i don't think they're in this model anymore i i've never found them um they should be hidden up here with the electrics, something like that. Uh, but we do have different igniters and so on, but the inverters are what we use to get DC electricity. But anyway, ventilation fan can be off. Inverter switch like one or two. De-icing switch is off, so that's all up here. That's all off. It's all off by default. We did a cold and dark start, as you can see. de switch, cabin lights and signs set. Um, so we just turn them on, ready. Uh, so let's have the where the cabin signs gone everything i have to read sideways in this airplane don't worry we won't do this for every flight this is going to be just this once as we get ourselves underway um that's a general lighting and entrance so put those on but they won't come on yet because we haven't turned anything else on uh, there is a passenger side and i've totally lost it oh the first officer's joined us just in time uh, and there's all our de-icing stuff which is all off hello uh, right let's get it powered up anyway We'll find those later. We'll just tell our passengers to sit down. Uh, beacon can come on. Won't come on anyway because we haven't got any power. Have I missed something? Control lights, parking brake handle, emergency, emergency, fuel, boost, static, don't invert the icing, cabin light and beacon on. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're not even on the battery yet, so I don't know why we're doing all this, but there we go. Beacon is, this is the anti-collision. The strobe lights are actually uh, put somewhere else just to be confusing in this airplane. Like there's pitot heat there, there's a taxi light there. Uh, we'll put the caution lights to bright for this flight, I think. Anyway, beacon, bleed air switches can go off. Bleed air switches are over here. They are off. Pedo heat off. There it is. Generator switches off. They are here. They are in the off position. Bus tie switch normal. Bus ties in normal. Flat panel up. They are up. And I can look on here and check they are at zero. Fuel levers off. Uh, so that is these red ones, which are both in the off position, not mixture levers, just fuel levers. Propeller levers fall forward. They are fully forward. Propeller levers fall forward. Power levers flight idle, which they are now in. And uh, windshield heat and wipers off. That is over on the other side. We scoot over here. Off. Yeah, not going anywhere. Landing lights off. Ignition normal. DC master on battery. So ignition's normal. That's under here. Uh, we can put the DC master um, on. And we can go to battery. And there we go, it starts to power up. But naturally, we can put it onto the external power because I should have external power available. There we go. Bus voltage check, that is over here. So that is, the battery's not doing any load, but we got load on the, uh, sorry, the battery is doing load, it is draining, there you go. Um, a bit concerning, hopefully that's not because of our, hopefully we have got that external power working. Yeah, good. Um, Bus voltage checked, caution lights test, fire detection test, fire bell mute. So we've got loads of tests we can do. There's like classic proper ringing. Uh, you can also mute that down here as well if you need to. Um, so we won't we won't worry too much about all of those. But next one is going to be the fuel quantity. Let's do that. So if I show you what we're doing today on our charts, we are going to take off. We need 600 kilograms of fuel for this flight. We've got a zero fuel weight of around about 5.2. Uh, sorry, 4.4, 4.4 on the zero fuel weight. So put that up here, bring it up again, and let's do, let's close up the doors. We're all pretty much loaded up. Leave the external power on, weight and balance. 
And here we go. Here's how we loaded up. So at the moment we have total fuel 600 kilograms. It says, um, what I'm going to do is add in some passengers. So I think we only had, we didn't have too many passengers on this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You can see the airplane actually rocks as you do that. That gives us a zero fuel weight of empty weight 3.4, search weight 4.9. Um, so we're about 4.2. So that should be around about right. We can maybe squeeze on a couple of bags and a couple in the back. There we go. Right, then we're going to go to fuel. We've got a total of 600 kilos. We don't actually need, uh, we need about, well, actually, no, we need exactly 600. It's mostly in the front, which is fine. So I think we'll just leave that as it is. So there we go. Fuel quantity is checked. That should be enough for what we're doing. Next is going to be engine start. There's an Edelweiss underway. So lots of cautions over there, but that's no problem. Let's get some lights on. Hopefully you guys can see a bit better there. Right, I've missed a whole load of things in the chat. I do apologize, everybody. Um, but yeah, thanks for coming along. And uh, I said hello to Lydia, hello to GTA, I think, and Thor, good to see you. And uh, yeah, we are down two. <laughs> so gosh, we answered. Uh, Ruby Red said, the 787 is a wonderful plane to fly, very stable, good size, and an all-purpose aircraft. Yeah, it does look lovely. Yes, Papa, good to see you. Thanks for coming and moderating as well. Um, yeah, the, the FO didn't make any noise today, but she is here. I can promise you that. Um, a few of you won't be flying along, no problem at all. No, it's a bit of an unusual one today. <laughs> uh, but yeah, good to see you, Swappy. Shame about your flights in. It keeps crashing. That's a bit annoying. Yeah, that does happen. Uh, Dana J. Suresh, good to see you. Thank you for coming. I hope you're doing very well. Oh, and the first officer's leaving. She's had enough of the noise. <laughs> good stuff. Okay. Um, well, we don't need to get a pushback. We're going to do another power back, I think, from here. Um, you can see our little beacon is on at the back there. Um, nav lights should come on as well. Where are the nav lights? Let's do... Oh, here they are. Oh, making a big scene out of it, trying to find it. Um, position lights, I think they're called in this airplane. There they are. So I'm just going to start up. We don't need to tell anyone. We're about to get <laughs> rammed by another baggage truck. So we'll get our engine started up, and let's just check the weather here. I believe we're departing from the northerly runway. I don't think it actually is too windy today um, either way. 120, yeah, so, uh, you know, it's a light southeasterly wind, so we could depart to the south actually probably, so, but we can depart from halfway down the runway. It'll be no problem for us here. Um, as you can see, we'll just taxi up and on. If I go to the charts there, let's do a southerly departure. No problem. Take off. We'll make a left turn. We'll avoid overflying the terminal if we can. Um, so I think with a 2,200 meter runway, I think we could easily, to be honest, get in the air from Charlie. Um, but we might do a little bit of a backtrack and then take off to the south. Uh, and away we go um, and off to the left. I have got a bit of a route. Uh, sorry, a bit of a, a the tutorial with me, but we're going to rotate about 65 to 70 knots, uh, climb at about 90 knots, uh, and use the autopilot should be available after that anyway. Uh, and then we're going to carry on climbing up to just set flight level 70 for this one. Let's just check what the transition altitude should be. So if I go here and to find any departure, I'll have all the transition altitude. This is actually 6,000. So yeah, flight level 70 is a 6,000 transition, but we're not flying any of the SIDs. There's just no need for it today. Um, it would just take the, most of the SIDs, funnily enough, would have us finishing up over Tenerife. Paul9, thank you very much for your 10-year donation. Really kind, Paul9. Good to see you here. Paul says, uh, have a nice flight there. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you for supporting the channel. And uh, yeah, thanks for coming along today. And thank you very much for that very, very generous donation. I hope you're doing very well. Thank you. Good to see you here. Um, Andy, uh, sorry, Andy, I said hi to uh, Window seat, good to see you. I hope you're doing well. Uh, and Tango Delta. Ariel says, I love this plane. Yeah, it's good fun, isn't it? Rishab says, first time I'm watching the Twin Otter stream. Love those twin props. Yeah, it's nice. And they're rotating in the wind, you can see there, <laughs> which is quite nice. But yeah, thank you again to Apollo 9 for your very kind donation. Uh, really, really appreciate it. Okay, let us, um, let's get started. So I'm going to forget the... Oh, don't know what that's done, but there we go. We're going to forget the external power. Let's um, close up this door. You can just click on things, which is nice. If I click down there. Get rid of the external power. So we're all closing off. We've got our fuel on board. We've got our passengers on board. Got our signs on as appropriate. So fuel levers off. They are off. Repeller levers fall forward. They're full forward. Uh, power levers idle. They are at idle. A bit hard to see, but they are um, because this range back here is the reverse range. Uh, here we go. Boost pump forward and aft on. So that is these fuel pumps. Like I said, they must be on. So you flick them up to turn them on. 
to make sure that this fuel will get it in. And we can see the fuel quantity here in pounds, but there, there's uh, 800 plus 200. There's about a thousand pounds, so 2.2 pounds to the kilogram. Um, so yeah, so we're, we're sitting with around 600 kilograms, which is all good. Uh, start switch, engine right, incredibly simple. So we would check it's all clear, or our FO certainly would. Let's go to the right engine. It starts spinning around. Look at that, 17 minutes to engine start. Still spinning, NG, so we can give it some fuel. Let's see if I can get the right lever. There we go, adding the fuel. And that's that. It couldn't be simpler. It's, uh, yeah, it's really great. This plane is not freeway aviation forever. This is a uh, payware aircraft for uh, X Plane 11. Think it take off before you get to the runway, Andy. Yeah, I agree. I agree. We may not even backtrack. I, I don't know the uh, the performance manual. They do provide it, actually. I should have read it a bit more carefully. Anyway, I don't know why I'm getting this go around warning. That's not, uh, not a great sign. Um, but I actually, I'm going to actually set 7,000 in here. Um, and there we go. Anyway, something I should have done, what I meant to do with you guys, was load up the GPS as well. So if we go to flight plan, um, oh, it's got a whole load of stuff in there. Let's see if I go to menu. I want to delete this flight plan. So scroll down, delete flight plan, enter. There we go. So GCLA, it knows where we are. And then very simple. So I'm going to push, select the cursor. Then I scroll down with the big knob. This is a really confusing system. Go to the small knob and select the waypoint Goma. Now you wouldn't normally do this with the engine running. Although if you didn't have external power, you may need to. And oh. Uh, the reason being, you don't want to sit running your electronics. You guys would have seen in the PA28 videos I've done that, uh, yeah, you don't have that luxury to sit there draining your battery. Goma. There it is. Canary Islands. Yes, please. We'll take the intersection at Canaries. You could also choose the Philippines if you wanted to fly all the way over there. So we'll accept that. And then from Goma, we're going straight into uh, our next airport. So again, just go straight to the small knob. It goes to the K because it's thinking of an airport because it's American, obviously. So G, C, G, M. There it is, La Gomera. Yes, please, enter, accept. And there is a little flight plan just to give us a bit of an idea. Um, but in terms of naves along the way, there really isn't a whole lot for us to <laughs> to use. Uh, so yeah, Ollie Nutt is flying from Gatwick to Barcelona. Excellent, enjoy. It can start on its own batteries indeed, Ollie. Yeah, it has no problem doing that. Uh, the stream, there's no stuttering on my screen. It's the could be the frame rate. Yeah, that is annoying, and I, it's it's a problem with with high frame rate sometimes. So yeah, I do apologise for that. Um, if you guys are having that trouble, but there we go. A bit of a uh, a bit of a um, flight plan. If I go to GPS on here, then it tells me the course I need one eight five. So this will be to set to just f follow that leg. So it's quite entirely possible for us to just fly on that GPS line. We're going to be visual with the terrain, but we would have <laughs> planned this probably a bit, a bit, a, bit of, a little bit better uh, in real life. But this is all for the fun of it. So course the 185, so I go there. Now it's happy uh, and that will be um, our departure. However, we're going to have to take off to the south and then turn around, uh, take off to the south and then join that line over to Goma. If we zoom out, there it is, Goma, and then uh, our destination. Lovely stuff. Right. Thank you, GPS. Let's start the other engine. Go to the left. I'm going to check that a few things spin. Oil pressure's up. The RPM's increasing. Let's give it some fuel. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Run that all the way forward. Thank you. Evening, Dave N. I hope you're doing well. Thanks for coming. I have not flown a 380. There it is. So we've done all of that. Two levers on. Generator left and right need to come on now. You'll see we've still got those warning lights. So up here. I'm going to have the bleed air on as well, actually. That provides some of the icing. And generator most definitely want on. I think you have to set them to reset and then on to make them work properly. And there we go. All of our warning lights are out. So that is good. Next is going to be pre takeoff. So trim tab set, flaps to 10. Um, so let's let's push back and then we'll do that. Let's do that. And uh, La Parba traffic, Manta 201, pushing back from stand uh, 6. Power back. Right, let's go. So I'm going to hold it on the tow brakes, which is release the parking brake anyway. Very straightforward, this. Oh, there's Edelweiss out there. Uh, 
Okay, copied. Uh, Manta 201 will uh, hold position on the stand. Okay, set that break. Back inside. Let's set up for the flight while he uh, he taxis out. Uh, oh, not there. Check this, please. So pre takeoff trim tabs set. Let's get that trim tab nose down. It's very nose up. That was remarkable, actually. <laughs> we need it set in our um, set in our normal takeoff position. Yeah, this will just be cable controlled. There's no hydraulics on this airplane that I've managed to find anyway. There we go. That should be in the takeoff range. Thanks, uh, Paulie Mac. Good to see you. Kai, good to see you as well. I hope you're doing very well. Thanks for coming. Um, yeah, then we're going to set the flaps. Granular flaps. So you can move it to any position you like, but that should be 10. And if we look on here, we've got 10 degrees. Perfect. Flight instruments checked. So we need to set our Q&H. Q&H is 1017. Oh, I forgot that it does this. I knew I had to convert something when I flew this last. Let's see if I can convert that. Who can convert that quick enough? I think that's 330. Something like that? That seems pretty low. 117 is 30.032. Somewhere there, about 100 feet. Seems reasonable enough. We're going to go to standard for the cruise anyway. Um, right, has that A device gone? Oh, he's just back. Oh, he's going to the parts of the north. Okay, fine. Mantis 201, power back from stand six. Right. Uh, let's finish this then. Navcom's radio is wrong. Guards. Ah, now my radio is working, but obviously <laughs> this doesn't seem to think so. So let's get all of these on. Um, I have got my little radio panel with me, of course. I've got nav on the bottom. There we go. And. Uh, Unicom on the right. Nav one source is selected. Looking good. Engine instruments check. Yeah, nothing in the red. Nothing too concerning. Bleed air. I've turned on. The ice not required. Next is going to be after takeoff. So, what I will do is let's get that heading bug around as well. Taking off from uh, runway 18. Good stuff. Right. Brake released. Don't go forward, please, airplane. And we'll just power back. We will not stand on the brakes because that is how we can get ourselves into big problems doing this. <laughs> Kai says, I'm doing well. Was flying the 350 from Lagos to Manchester, but steam caused the X-plane to crash. Ah, oh, that's a shame. Yeah, a few people had trouble. Anthony, good to see you. I hope you're doing well, Anthony. And Bella Jurassic, thanks for coming along. A device is going to be going from that end. Perfect. TBM 023, maybe they're flying along with us. God, that looks like a little Pilatus to me. This is great, isn't it? No need for pushbacks or anything like that. We can just get ourselves out and underway. Good to see you, Pilot Stud. I hope you're doing well. And uh, yeah, I hope you're having a great Easter too. Pilot Stud, of course, a famous YouTuber I'm sure you're all familiar with. Right, let's bring it to a stop here. I'm not going to touch the brakes. I'm not even going to steer it until we're going forwards, I think. Um, and thank you for your subscriptions to Iman and uh, Juan. Squeeze on the brakes. There we go. Set the parking brake. Um, and Joseph, I hope you're doing well. Thank you for uh, uh, your subscriptions if you are watching. Right, we're powered back. Their device is going to go. We're going to taxi out to the left. Let's get a couple of these lights on. And I do apologize um, to those of you when we get a whole load of those alerts coming through. I think it's just going to do the three. Victor Tango, good to see you. I hope you're doing well. I think I'm going to leave the landing lights off. Uh, but up here, for some reason, not attached to the same panel is the taxi light. <laughs> um, so there we go. And I'm going to put the Peter on because I don't see why you wouldn't. I'm nervous of not having pizza heat. Right, everybody's going that way, so let's taxi out. All clear around. Very easy to maneuver on the ground, this airplane. I really, really like it. Don't seem to need to do power runs. It is a turbine airplane, so it doesn't seem to work under the same uh, principles. Plus, we've got two engines. <laughs> Interesting steering tiller. That's the nose wheel tiller. It's that um, thing <laughs> on the yoke. Not seen that very often, but there we go. Okay, about 100 feet does seem about right, actually, for this airport. Yeah, Streamlabs is, uh, is misbehaving, although luckily not too many today. I should not I should be upset there's not too many today. And away we go. I've got a nice camera angle here. I'm quite happy with this one. Oh, struggling to stay on the center line on this thing. It does run away. I should... 
I struggle not to. The airplane seems to want to go forwards when I when I'm at flight idle. Okay, I'm using a little bit of reverse on taxi. I have no idea if you can do that. I flew the Dash 8, uh, and on the Dash 8 turboprop, you absolutely could not use reverse. We didn't use reverse or anything. You had what's called disc. Uh, so this doesn't seem to have it. It's got idle and then reverse, Max. Disc was a, was a way to make the propeller spin in such a way that they didn't produce any thrust, it seemed, either way. it was, uh, But it's quite noisy for the passengers. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So, guys, yeah, this flight, 30 minutes over to uh, La Camera, somewhere we've never been, somewhere we certainly wouldn't take an airliner, uh, just used domestically. It's much smaller than these other airports. Um, so, yeah. Oh, we've got uh, someone flying along. DFDAL is flying along with us. Fantastic. And possibly the TBM. Yeah, excellent news. Air device is on the way. Ah, Victor's flying along with Mateo. Excellent. Where's LKFK? Infinite Aviation, good to see you. Thanks for coming. Mateo as well, thanks for coming and moderating. There goes Edelweiss. Right. La Palma traffic. Manta 201 entering runway 18 for a short backtrack and taking off to the south. Okay. Off goes the Edelweiss. Brakes released. Let's get the anti-collision lights on. These, not those ones. They're hidden somewhere else. I did find them. Where did I find them? Oh, I searched. I did all this yesterday. Or was it two days ago now, actually? It's been a little while. There is a... I'm sure in the daylight we don't need them as a rule. Uh, but there is... Strobe lights. There they are. Weirdly, that switch seems to go the other way. So we'll do a little backtrack just because I... Uh, I'm worried if we have an engine failure, we wouldn't make it off the runway. <laughs> Simon says, I'm DFDAL with a Cessna 208. Perfect, you'll be faster than us. We're only going to be going, well, 160 knots, if we're lucky. So you actually should be all right. <laughs> Rasmus, good to see you. I hope you're doing well. So yeah, where, Mateo, where are, you, where are you guys flying? Where's LFLK? I, I feel like I should know that one. How much do we want to bother with this? Ah, oh, to be flying around the Canaries in the Twin Otter, eh? Wouldn't that be nice? It's been some lovely weather today in the UK, but it's really put me in the mood to uh, to be able to go and travel a little bit. It's a bit of a shame. <laughs> right, round we go. Slow it down a bit. That's pretty sporty, even for a Twin Otter. Manta 201 departing to the south. Uh, the Palmer traffic. Okay, let's go. 65 knots for the rotate. I'm going to go for full power. Holding a bit of forward pressure. Oh, wow. Yeah, we're going to be <laughs> off the ground before we even reach our backtrack point. There's 65. Let's get it into the air. Oh, try and stay near the center line. No gear to come up. 90 knots. Trim it out for that, I think. We'll start off with... And away we go. And there's our La Palma Airport. We won't turn over the terminal. And we'll depart off to the south. East. <laughs> Perfect. So I'm going to climb up to 7,000 feet. Let's get those flaps in now and accelerate a little bit. And you can see I've got my course bar set to GPS. So it says GPS over here. So that means this course bar will just try and get me onto that pink line, which I can just follow all the way to the next waypoint. It won't take us long at all to get over there. I don't know how comfortable I'd be at uh, flying over the water this much in a twin otter. I think it'd be fine. <laughs> and away we go. It does have a tendency to yaw, so I'm imagining it's got propellers that spin the same direction, actually. We didn't bother to check. You guys will remember this because the last time we came here, 757, we did that non-precision approach, which was great fun. We've done a couple of non-precision approaches in other aeroplanes now, which I hadn't done. I was never brave enough. So we do have an autopilot available to us. Let's see if I can remember how to use it because it's quite quite fancy or quite capable, you know, for what it is. So let's go put that there. See, it's constantly yawing, but I won't worry about that for now. Let's put engine on. Engage, sorry. 
Then we'll go heading. And I'll go for IS. And now, as we accelerate, it's dipping a bit. It should head over there. And then I'm going to arm um, nav. And nav should engage and fly us over to that line, I'm hoping. Yep. And we are... We have excess thrust, so we are climbing. There we go. Finally, we started on La Palma. We are going to La Gomera. Somewhere I've never been. So as you can see now, that is just going to bring us in towards our magenta line. Very lazy. Now there is a way. Message set course to 155 at once. Had a bit of a dog leg in the start there then. Because I was going to say pure south definitely didn't feel right. There we go. That looks better. <laughs> so that should come in now, that uh, bar. This doesn't get more sensitive. It's not like a VOR. It won't get more sensitive um, as we get closer to our waypoint. It just stays at a fixed distance. So if we're half a mile off track now, we'll stay half a mile off track. And 22 minutes to go. And we'll be quicker than that. That's just a goma. Might struggle to get up to 7,000 feet. So let's bring those props back. I think last time we flew this... Oh, they weren't as far forward as I thought. If we bring them back a little bit, it'll be a bit quieter for the passengers. And we're going to get more performance out of it. Look at that. <laughs> Coarser pitch on the propellers allows it to, to push the air. The only risk is you can raise, if you raise the temperatures too much, that's a little bit hot. So that's a little bit too coarse. So the engines are overheating trying to do that. It's like going into too high of a gear in your car. It's like going from first gear to fifth gear or something like that. So I'm just going to and they're very sensitive something i have noticed with these propellers like you, you don't have to move that lever much at all and you get quite large changes mm, keep it in the yellow seems all right <laughs> and away we go this plane not have your damper no i don't think it does i don't think it does i mean maybe it does having an autopilot usually means your damper but it's got a very straight wing. The your damper is more of a swept wing thing. Uh, your damper is used to... There you go. Look at that scenery. Really nice. A bit hazy, but still nice. Oh, we didn't get those landing lights on. Let's have those on while we're down here, I think. Well, I'm ready for the approach now. <laughs> yeah, so the your damper is used on swept wing aircraft because of the way they will oscillate. They're going to Dutch roll, whereas this airplane is not so prone to it because uh, of its big straight wing. But um, yeah, it may well have a your damper of some variety. Simply UK, good evening. Thanks for coming along. I hope you're doing very well. So we'll keep our climb going up. We can also let's tune into natural nav aids because I don't like just flying around purely looking at the uh, at the GPS. So GC, GM. There it is. Looks like they're using runway nine. Oh no, hold on. Looks like they're using the Westley runway two seven. Great. It's only four thousand nine hundred feet. If we go to arrival. There's not a whole lot of useful information. <laughs> We've come from, effectively from La Palma. We're heading down like this. Um, there's no real nav aids here at all. At all. <laughs> we'll see if we can put something in the GPS when we get up to the cruise. And if you go to airports, we're going to land on 27. And just, if we can, we want to do a short backtrack and go into the apron here. Meet up with our colleagues, reload, and off we go. Uh, and for the approach chart, there's just this. Look at this. That's it. It's not a great island for an airport. You can see the terrain is actually incredibly steep, very near to the airport, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. So there's 4,900 foot elevation. It's volcanic, obviously, the Canary Islands being volcanic. You can already see it on the nose, actually. Um, oh, yeah, wow. DFDA is doing way better than we are. <laughs> I thought they'd be all right. Yeah, Matt Olsen, it's a GA aircraft in VMC. Weren't you supposed to be looking out the windows? It is a GA aircraft. Um, and yeah, yeah, pretty much. We aren't doing much IFR. Certainly using the GPS does is a bit like cheating. But uh, I don't think we need to climb all this way. But we have got 17 minutes in the cruise. So what we'll do is... Uh, let's change it. Let's go to 6,000 feet. Let's not bother going to a flight level. That just seems silly. So we'll level off at 6. Get the out warning. And there is... I think if I now press out alert... Oh, did I do that right? 
It's a fancy new system they added to this one. I think it will uh, get us to the level. Your dampers are important due to the torque as well. Yeah, so the Dash 8 had a your damper, most certainly. But it also had, you know, a relatively capable autopilot. The autopilot in this is a bit more basic. Luke says, my dad flies these planes and the Citation around the Caribbean and the West Antilles. Fantastic. That would be a fantastic job. Yeah, wouldn't that be amazing? I'm going to put the radio altimeter. Let's have it go at, let's have it just warn us at, as we pass through 500 feet in the descent. There we go. Nearly into our level off. It looks like it's capturing with a little out warning. <laughs> yeah, that Cessna really stormed ahead. Implier says, I wish GCRR was in flight plan. I love that approach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't fit them all in. <laughs> still taking a bit of a, it's a bit of a, a journey for this airplane. Right, there's a level off. And there's still just no navays to tune. We're just going to have to find our way there. I'll see in a second if the GPS can do anything for us. So we are at full thrust. We don't want to be there forever. So I'm going to bring the power back. Bring those props back. A bit more. It gets much quieter for the passengers when you lower that RPM. Mm, a little bit slow. Just hoping to see the speed <laughs> increase a little bit. Seems to be washing off. Hmm. What else could we do? Does it want to come back a bit more? I think they do. There we go. Yeah, amazing, isn't it? Amazing. RPMs are not aligned though. There we go. Right, so that should make it a bit more economical, a bit faster. Uh, have I ever flown to Canary Islands in real life? Uh, I don't think I don't think I have actually. So we're going to Lagomera to land. Richie Ray says waiting for the next group flight. Yeah, we'll have to do a group flight soon, won't we? Okay, right. That's all working out. We're going to be there in 12 minutes, and then we're going to descend down. <laughs> it's only 27 miles away, so we're going to have to start down fairly soon. What you can do is, we, I think we can get to procedure. Let's see. I'm going to select an arrival, enter, at GCGM. There's no arrivals. Well, that is the end of that plan. Um, so I'm going to clear. Ah, forget it then. So we'll just come in, and let's just orientate ourselves. We're heading 155. So... We're going to come round the islands um, and effectively I'm going to just head out to sea and do a downwind join. Airfield elevation, quite important, is 26 hectopascals. Also pretty high actually, 700 feet, yeah, okay. So we must keep that in mind. So if we descend downwind to sort of a circuit height, that's going to be at least uh, 1700 feet. Uh, and then we can take ourselves out a bit wide. Does it have a VOR? It does have a VOR 1160, so let's tune the VOR. One one six zero. Let's set that up. So the VOR needle one is pointing straight for it, the thinner needle. Okay. That means we'll also get a DME, which we can see here. Then we go off mic, twenty seven miles away. Okay, so if we go to two thousand feet above the airport on a six mile circuit, that's probably too far. I want to do a three degree descent. Let's think that it is possible to do an OBS actually, if I was clever enough. Mm. I'm not clever enough. <laughs> That's just drawing a line from the next waypoint. That's not what I was hoping for. Okay, no problem. Right, so what we'll do is we will uh, just fly downwinds. Um, and let's see, if we are at 1,000 feet, we obviously need to be three miles out. So if we get to three DME at 1,700 feet, then we can start our descent into the airport at three degrees, which we can do. So 1,700 feet, three DME, and that's going to be as an inbound of uh we're gonna be landing on the Wesley we said so an inbound of two seven zero so there's the plan so to show you what that plan is we're gonna come down downwind fly back in and we should be about three miles out 
1700 feet descend towards the airport because that's a thousand feet above the airport when we get there lovely let me just check the q and h now if it's close enough i won't change it just because yeah 1017 i don't think um i don't think my x-plane is updating the weather actually Simplier says 100k subscriber face reveal with an IRL flight to LIRF. <laughs> there you go. Wouldn't that be nice? That doesn't seem to be too windy. Matthew Presley, good to see you. Matthew says, who is all looking forward to the Felix 747-200? Some old school steam gauge long haul. Is that coming to X-Plane or Microsoft Flight Simulator? And how long will it be? Because I would love that. Yeah, I'd love to. The 747 Classic is really, really nice. So Gosh says, did you read the pilot operating handbook to see different throttle RPM configs or are you judging by feel? Sorry if this has been answered. No, I must admit, I'm just judging by feel. Let me um, load up the documents because I'll tell you what the tutorial says. <laughs> uh, it just says, if you 10,000 feet. Okay, once at cruise, pull the propeller levers back about a fifth of their allowed travel and slightly reduce power. It'll allow it to run more economically. <laughs> so yeah, that's all you get from them. Um, but they do, I think, provide a operator's handbook. So let's have a look. As you guys know, I don't tend to... S I'm pretty guilty of not not following them too intensely. Let's just see if they include prop values for the crews. That describes the system. Oh, apparently it does have a hydraulic system. It's an electrical pump that runs from an electric bus. All control services and landing gear functions are operated from hydraulically. It is an automated system. You've got two gauges to show you hydraulic pressure on the panel. Fuel flow. Oil. Oil. Fuel quantity. Where's the hydraulics? Over here, maybe? No. That's the batteries. Not sure. Not sure. Yeah, my knowledge on this plane is terrible. There's the island. Excellent. Uh, it doesn't seem to include any figures for me. Last document I'm going to check. Ah, yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, it's got takeoff power setting charts, takeoff distance required. So you could, if you read those carefully enough, you could read everything you need. Takeoff climb, takeoff distance, takeoff power, maximum climb power. So the climb power setting would be the one. Make sure you don't um, but don't burn out the engines trying to do that. So gosh, says I no longer feel guilty for not studying the pilot operator's handbook. Yeah, yeah. Now for the planes I fly in the simulator, I think I've, I've mentioned this before, I don't tend to, um, I try not to study them in too much detail. I don't want to accidentally start thinking about, uh, I don't want to call it trivia, but the, the details of these specific aircraft too much. Um, so I'd just like to have a, a basic understanding, able to fly them, uh, an understanding of roughly the systems. That the, the Twin Otter, this is why I wanted to fly it today. I, I don't, we just did one flight with it and we were mostly focused on the the fact we were doing VOR navigation. We flew a whole procedure with it as well. Um, but for today, I just wanted to, well, take it for a spin. Uh, let's do a nice wing view. Oh, no, clicking the wrong thing. There we go. There's the island coming into view. Richard V, good to see you. I hope you're doing well. Thanks for coming along. Happy Easter to you. I am not currently flying in real life, sadly. No. Stream overlay is from Fly Life Studio. Hey, Vijay Henry. Fuerte Ventura is a nice airport, says Fado. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we're going to, um, as we said, uh, La Gomera. One of the smaller of the islands. And the airport, as I said, pretty small. The terminal only opened here in 1999. Um, but as you can see, the island is small, incredibly volcanic, and therefore just not that suitable for um, for um, building an airport, really. What we're going to do, let's jump over there and take a closer look. I think I think that'd be nice to do. Uh, Jonathan Blood, thank you very much, Jonathan, for your very kind donation. Really appreciate it. Jonathan says, thanks for keeping me sane during lockdown and learning to fly the bus with the amazing vids. You're very welcome, Jonathan. Uh, really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope you're doing very well. Thank you for your kind donation. Really, really kind. Um, let's go heading. Let's just cruise over the islands. We'll go a little bit closer, I think. Go and enjoy it. Uh, yeah, thank you, Jonathan. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Glad it's, the videos have been uh, have been useful for you. And I hope the streams have been entertaining enough. <laughs> so we're 6,000 feet now. Going to head basically straight for the airport. I'm going to descend over the islands. All VFR. Just get a nice view. Got this nice scenery for once. 
Thank you to Orbex. Orbex provided the scenery. Aviator Henry said, where did you say it's from? Well, uh, the airplane is by RW Design on X-Plane Org. Uh, the airport we departed from was La Palma, GCLA. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you, Jonathan. Oh, uh, the overlay. That's what Aviator Henry wanted. The overlay is Fly Life Studio. Audio suggesting we do nefarious things over the beach. But there doesn't look to be too many beaches on this island. Really, it is actually really rugged, isn't it, as an island? So, um, yeah, I'd be curious to go and have a look. What I can do, just to sync all this up, let's go direct to... In fact, no, if we go flight plan, I scroll down, then go menu, activate leg. It's course a 079. Mm, I think I've done that wrong. Let's do direct GCGM. <laughs> Easier. Message course 126. That sounds about what we're doing. Just going to point straight ahead. I'm going to change that little course bar. I'm going to press this to VOR. So now that's pointing it straight at the VOR. And our course bar shows us accordingly. There is a way to make the um, terrain display as well. If I hold down clear, it takes us back to the nav page. Let's do that again. Nav two page, menu, data fields. Mm, not sure. Not sure we can do that actually. Not sure it's going to show us terrain. Anyway, let's clear that out. Nothing to see over there. Plenty to see over here. Look at this. Fantastic. Thanks, AJ Henry. Appreciate it. Not bad, is it? Not bad. Oh, there's our wheel lightly spinning in the breeze. <laughs> so, some things to remember about Twin Otter landing. What did we learn last time? Do you guys remember? I've been trying to remember. I remember we needed to get slower, get more power off, and get that nose higher up. It was very easy to land on the nose wheel. We're going to land with flaps about 30, I think, should be fine. Uh, and that means a landing speed of around about 75 knots. 75 knots, which makes about sense so 75 knots on approach should work for us that is great isn't it i mean i often see a lot of my discord communities uses x-plane and they have just fantastic scenery they've done great work with ortho and so on which i have not not managed let's descend down so i'm gonna go let's get the speed back first actually We're going to do the same. We're going to do a, an overhead sort of downwind join if we can find the airport, which should be coming up in front of us. It is currently in front of us by... How many miles away now? Five miles. So now I'm going to press... I'm going to wind the window down. We say we're going down to... I'll do 2,000 feet for now. Ah, yes. And the airplane should lower the nose and start down. Welcome okay, Mayor Traffic, Manta 201, joining uh, from the uh, west, from the northwest, downwind to land on uh, 27. Thanks, Toga. Good to see you here. Thanks for coming along. And yeah, hopefully, 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 let's get that power back. Let's get down. Oh. Okay, that's only final. So we're basically going to join through the overhead so we can look out and see any traffic around us. There's the airport there. First time it's into view. Turning into a nice day here. So we'll go over this end. This is not quite a standard overhead join, but an overhead join is a very UK thing anyway, I think. <laughs> so someone's turning onto final. Let's just keep a good lookout for anyone else cruising around. Start to bring those RPMs back up now, I think. Give us a bit more drag. Help us get the height off. Area left. Good to see you. 
Dougal, good to see you, Dougal. I hope you're doing well. Dougal says, hope all are well. Watching from my bed, recovering from chemo. I hope you're doing okay, Dougal. Really good to see you here. And uh, yeah, take it easy. I hope you've managed to, uh, to have a, a relatively nice Easter day, or a, at least a relaxing one. Uh, thanks for coming along. Okay, so... Can't see anyone, though yeah, we should be able to see someone out there, but uh, we failed at that as well. <laughs> that is great. I really love the, the canaries. They're so so different. As you're saying, very, very volcanic. See, we might do the next sector just a little bit, a little bit faster, but it won't take us long to get set up and underway for the next sector. Just got to refile the flight plan. There's the runway. Passing overhead at 4,000 feet. So we'll keep it descending. I go to idle on the power. If I put those propellers up to max, we'll get loads more drag. That's a great trick in the Dash 8. And now you'll see that nose just drop and drop and drop. Manta 201, uh, Lagomera, downwind to land 27. Can we spot anyone else? There they are. There's the TBN. And there's the apron. There's the VOR. You can always spot VORs. Yeah, thanks for thanks for going along, Dougal. Right, downwind. And I'm going to set my course bar to east-west. Just to remind me of which way we're landing. It helps orientate me, even if we're not going to be using that uh, too much. Again, I... Aha, uh -huh, there we go. Delta Alpha Lima is on final, so they both overtook me. Outrageous. Now it feels like we're being blown away a bit, so I'm gonna I'm gonna turn in. So we're now coming down to two thousand feet. Let's get the power on. I won't turn final until I've seen the traffic in front. So that's our next mission. There they are. Okay, yeah, let's get that power on. We don't want to send any lower. We're going out to three miles. Uh three miles at um seven hundred feet. So, we're about to reach 1,700 feet. You see, I didn't press the out alert, so I'm going to press it. Out alert. Ah, that's not working. Autopilot off. <laughs> Making life difficult now. Get the power on. Level off at 1,700. There it is. Good stuff. It does take a lot of power to keep this thing level. You can do it, airplane. Okay, that traffic we did. I'm hoping see it go past. Not too much, please. It doesn't seem to show up very uh, very well at the moment. Um, anyway, there's 2.8 miles. I'm going to turn it around now. Oh, we're going up to 1800. So this is even a wider approach than we needed to do. Yeah, I'm not sure that we're not. We could fit a few of you in the hold. It does have a forward and rear hold, which is quite nice. <laughs> I don't know how you get into this airport. It has no approaches at all. Oh, there you go. They've already landed. Perfect. You would really require some nice weather. Right. We are at 2.9 miles, 1,600 feet. Stop descending. Um, there's the runway. Let's get ourselves over there. Two whites to red. So let's get that speed back now. We'll be there in no time. So power's coming back. We've got the props at max. The fuel up. Good. So just going to get some flap out now. I'm really not sure how late in the approach they would do that in a Twin Otter. We're a little bit high, so let's keep it descending. There we go. Oh, no, not yet. Let's get a bit slower. There we go. Now we'll go for 30. I want to actually get off at that apron if I can. We shall see what happens there. So there's 80 knots. Got to add some power now. Four whites in this airplane is very easy to fix. Everything's happening so slowly. I am confusing my vertical speed indicator for the rad out, though. Quite easy to do. Something I have noticed. Manta 201, final approach, Lagomera uh, 27. Right, let's give it a go then. Oh, 
Oh, no lower than that. We don't want to get pushed down. That's pretty good scenery at this airport. We're a bit fast, though. I do find this airplane... I'm determined to fly it too quickly. 75 knots. A little bit breezy. Idle. Hold the nose up. Hold the nose up. I think we're down. We definitely missed our turning point. There we go. Yeah, I mean, that may have been flat. We shall find out. We shall find out. Let's put it into reverse. And slow it down. And we are here. Yeah, I'm not sure at what point we touched down there. <laughs> uh, right, let's spin it around. Get ourselves vacated. We've got lots to do today, so we'll get these passengers off, get some fresh ones on, and we're going to head over to the next sector, to Tenerife South. A much bigger airport. It is good fun, this airplane. Yeah, I agree. Go on, airplane. You can do it. Doesn't want to turn around. Was that a battle, was it? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I wasn't sure where it touched down. We will have a quick look at the replay just while we log out and back into VATSIM. Right, as we taxi in, let's get those flaps up. All the way in, please. We'll have a... Yeah, we, we would enjoy the replay. Why not? We have the replay. And let's do the checklist. So we should have done the descent, fuel quantity, checked, set. Yeah, we did all that. Everyone knows we did all that. You guys are happy with that, right? <laughs> right, flaps retracted. Bleed air can come off. Might do that as we vacate the runway just as uh, I won't manage that. The icing's off. Landing lights, strobes will come off. Transponder off. Trim tabs reset. Okay, no problem there. <laughs> Thanks, DVM23. <laughs> yeah, let's get ourselves over to... Well, we can do it now, can't we? So, bleed air can come off. I know we're on the runway, so we'll leave the lights on for a little bit longer. I'm surprised. Are we going uphill? It's just not moving. Am I doing something wrong here? Am I going to find out I've accidentally set the brake or something? No. We put the props to max. Yeah, it's really sluggish, which is a, a bit funny. It must be slightly uphill. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Transponder and trip tab. So, yeah, we can reset that trim tab now, actually. Let's do that. Where was it? It's not too bad. Put it back in the middle. And then it'll be shut down. I'll leave that out, actually. Let's go get ourselves parked up. Oh, no. The dreaded taxi light. They do seem to exist. A little in the, or runway light, that is, I suppose. They are good at getting in the way in these flight simulators. Yeah, we'll have time for a replay. It's just a very short one. <laughs> right, let's get some of those lights off and we'll park up over here. Oh, actually, we can do an entrance and an exit. Spin in and out, which is always very nice. So landing lights off. And let's get the strobe lights off. Look at that, it just stops. I don't understand the difference. I'm really confused. We couldn't stop it from running away earlier. Simon says, DFDL won't join us on the next stage because we're starting the Easter bonfire. Oh, enjoy. That sounds lovely. Enjoy that very much. Now, I'm not sure how much of this checklist we would run. Seeing as we're going to go straight back out again. I'm really not. Just get ourselves over on that line. You see Twin Otters doing all this sort of great stuff whenever you see them around. They're always doing the busy work. They run at a slightly different pace to us in the uh, the 320s. All right. Parking brake is set. We will shut down, though. So um, I'm going to give us an external power. I think I'll just plug that in now. Is that available now? We'll say it is. I don't want to turn everything off. Power leave is idle. Prop leave is to feather. So that brings the RPM right down, but it doesn't shut off the engine. So they spin in their very coarse position. There they are. Um, generators can come off. Off, off. Boost pumps off. And that seems to sh shut off the fuel. 
Oh, we should have done fuel levers. That's that would make more sense. There we go. Same effect. As you can see, if you turn, if you lose those boost pumps that take the fuel from those tanks up to the engines, you do immediately run out. Uh, external battery switch. We're going to go onto the external. There we go. Uh, and DC master off controller. So, well, we're not doing that. We're not going to do this one either. We're basically going straight to the engine starts. Right. Let's get those passengers out. Welcome to Lagomera. Quickly, those passengers will hop off and on. And what we're going to do is just disconnect from that sim. Let's just see. Let's just see. We've got to learn from that flight. We've got to learn from that landing, haven't we? Uh, so that's. I love the X-Plane replay. It's really good, isn't it? Here we go. Look at that nose down. <laughs> just too fast. That extra five knots makes all the difference here. And then we spent ages sitting there, sitting there, sitting there. Yeah, I think we got away with it. I think we got away with it. <laughs> Thanks, Duncan, for your uh, five Swiss franc donation. Really appreciate it. Duncan says, I lived in Gran Canaria for two years, did a lot of island hopping, bringing back fond memories. Happy Easter to you and everyone watching. That's great. <laughs> That's really good to hear. Thanks for coming along, Duncan. And um, yeah, appreciate your donation. Really kind. I hope you're doing very well. Yeah, fantastic. I, I do like that scenery. That's a bit of a, a bit of a passenger view. Floating along. <laughs> Enjoy, Ed. See you a bit later. Ollie says, have you blown a tyre? Is that possible? Oof. There you go. That could be possible. That could explain a lot. Uh, would we see it? Everything does look fine. But there we go. So, we are now going to connect to that sim as the 202. We're going to File a flight plan from GCGM2. We are now going to GCTS, Tenerife South, of course. Oh, GCTS. And we'll keep the Palmer as uh, the, oh, sorry, not the Palmer, um, Grand Canaria as the alternate departing at uh, 1830 UTC. We should be going much quicker than that. We're going to go GCGM2. Direct Tenerife South VOR. Direct to Tenerife. Manda 202. Now this is a shorter flight. It's said to go to flight level 90, but I, I really don't want to. I'm going to actually uh, do 5,000 feet, I think. I can't see the point of going up to 90. Let's do 5,000. And that's file great stuff Lydia says currently flying the Manta livery and Microsoft Flight Simulator and the really nice livery with the A2GNX yeah um, depending which one you've got but uh, Paddy and 8455 have done great jobs on art liveries I guess it was tired of all the pressure says Thor very good I haven't heard that one before I do like it <laughs> no our window should be open oh, 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 oh. oh I see by fiddling too much it's all uh, it's all closed We've lost our external power as well. Ah, well, that's not good. Right then, so those passengers are going to be getting on. Let's do our weight and balance. So for this sector, we need, let me check, how much fuel do they want? I want 530 kilograms of fuel. And we need a, uh, so we got a little bit less than that. So we did burn a fair bit of fuel on that one. Not, not much at all, really. Uh, but yeah, and I want to add a few passengers. We're going with a, a few more passengers for this one. So I want to be taking off with 4.4, uh, 5.4, 4, sorry, uh, 5, 5 5.0 should be around about our takeoff weight. At the moment we're at 4.8, so let's go to the fuel. We need a little bit more fuel. Put that in the back. There you go, 555, that should be enough. And let's go to payload. A total weight of 4.8 so we can fit yeah we were going to have a couple more passengers on this one put them at the front it seems to balance us out a bit better there we go taking off at five tons so a couple more passengers um have joined us for the sector this is sort of a bus we're just picking people up on the way over to uh, tenerife south uh, but yeah right <laughs> matt says it's going to look like my landing later today just floating down the center line excellent excellent good evening head and jay robbins good to see you i hope you're doing well thanks for coming along 100 kilos of fuel yeah not bad at all not bad 
Um, the flight plans are pretty generous with the fuel actually. Let's uh, let's swap over our chart. So this one trip fuel for that was 152 kilograms. Yeah, I'd say we we didn't even burn that really. We didn't quite fly the whole thing. So let's close that and let's go for GCG and to Tenerife South. 118 kilograms, even less. You can see 530 required. Good stuff. Um, before we power up, let's just check our chart. Is there any useful departure for us? Pretty confident there isn't. Depths, there we go, that'll do. You can see, look, it's, <laughs> departures take us all the way over to Tenerife, but that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to the 1164, so I'll, um, let's power up and then we'll do that. Check this, please. Now I have a horrible feeling I need to run the pre-start again. So control dots are off, parking brake is set. Let's get these doors closed up actually as well. We'll do it on battery this time. I do like this, that you can click them from the outside. That's quite quite unique, I haven't seen that before. Anyway, handles are in, emergency fuel switch is normal. Emergency pumps are off, fuel selector to normal. Boost pumps are indeed off. Static source, normal, vent fan off. Inverter switch, select one or two, we've done. The icing switch off, cabin lights are set. Time to do the beacon. So that is the end collision up there. Beacon can come on. Bleed air switches are off because uh, we turned them off earlier. There they are. Uh, Peter heat off. Well, I did leave it on. Let's turn it off. And uh, generator switches off. They are. Bus tie normal. Flap handle up. Fuel levers off. Propeller levers full forwards. So I can see you shut them down by putting it into feather. Feather would. What the magic of feather is? It slows down the propellers. It, it makes them completely coarse. So you cut off the fuel and you'll make them go as coarse as you can. The dash eight did that. We did it in a slightly different way, but there we go. Um, power levers flight idle, they are. Windshield heat and wipers are off, landing lights off, ignition switch is to normal. DC master on, battery, there you go, the lights come on. Bus voltage checked, we have DC load, we have DC volts, perfect. Caution lights test, we've done all this already, so we won't do those again. And we have our fuel, let's just check, we've got it in tanks, there it's coming on. Uh, yeah, a little bit less, but about right. Good, engine start. So fuel levers are off, propeller levers are full forward, power levers are at idle, boost pump switch has to come on. Now, if you forget this step, it just doesn't work. And trust me, I have forgotten this step many times. We should also put our transponder on. That would help, wouldn't it? Thank you, standby. There we go. Um, so boost pumps are on, so fuel can get to the engines now. And that's it. Let's start the engine. So we'll start the right engine. You can hear it ticking over. Hopefully you guys can hear that as well. Galaxar, good to see you. And yet this is a paid aircraft for X-Plane. It's not, it's not the most expensive add-on though, I'd say. Fuel can come on. We are ready to go. How did that take? Doesn't seem long. We should time the next one. Right, engine number one is on, of course. Let's go for engine number two. Start. Spinning. Let's give it some fuel. You can check all the usual things. RPMs, you've got a temperature rise, which you want to cool down as it accelerates. The peak temperature usually comes during start um, while it's you know not got enough airflow through it. And there we go. Good stuff. So we started about the engine. It's so easy, isn't it? So start switch engine there, fuel lever on, generator left and right on. So let's get the Jennies online, as lots of pilots call them. Reset on, reset on. I'm going to turn on the bleed air now as well. I'm going to turn on the pitot heat because I'll forget it later otherwise. Before takeoff then, trim tabs are set. Let's get those flaps to 10 again. Uh, flight instruments checked, so we're on the Q&H. I'm going to climb up to 5,000 feet on this one we discussed already. Parting from runway 27, let's get the heading bug round. Zoom, 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 zoom. And... Let's get this flight plan. Let's uh, clear out the flight plan. Delete. So GCGM, good. Scroll down. We're going to T, F, S, Tenerife South. Accept, and then we can choose the airport, so. I'm pretty sure that if you have a UK one of these Garmin's, it would show you an E there to start off with. Um, I think. Because obviously, it, our airports start with E. Uh, and then we're going to go GCTS. So G, 
see. T S enter accept. Thank you very much. That's all we need there, really. Uh, we're going to the Tenerife VOR, which uh, is a 1164. So let's get that tuned in. I'm just going to display that now. No need to mess around. So it's going to be a departure from 27. Then we make a left turn all the way back around, downwind, over to Tenerife South, and then into uh, that airport. Fantastic. Good. So trim tab set, flaps 10, flight instruments checked, navcom radios checked and set. Transponder is going to go. I'm just going to put it on out now. <laughs> um, that's navcom radios. Propeller levers full forward. Engine instruments checked. Bleeder left and right is on. The ice not required. Next one's after takeoff. So, Lagomero traffic, uh, Manta 202, taxiing to take off runway 27 from Alpha. Right. Ah, the overlay. Good point. Very good point. Thank you. I knew I'd forget something. GCGM to GCTS. See, now it's running away. <laughs> Seems fine again now. Manta 202. Okay. Oh. Uh, doing too many things at once. It had to unravel. Stand by, stand by, stand by. I will solve that for you very shortly. I knew that would happen. I knew. I was taxiing and leaning over and doing the overlay. And I thought to myself, this will never work. <laughs> GC GM Lagomera GC ES Tenerife South I M X two uh, zero two. There we go. Right, you guys should have an overlay now. What happened? I, I managed everything, and then I accidentally hit uh, the cross <laughs> and closed it. Bleeders on. Uh, let's get all the lights on. So we have the anti-collision lights on. Position lights are already on. Strobe lights can come on. See, they flick backwards, whereas these ones flick forward. Very confusing to me. Um, very easily confused. And like a mare, Manta 202, lining up, taking off runway 27. Clear on the approach. We've made our call. We've got our flaps at 10. We would, of course, do some very thorough flight control checks. And it's time to head off. Yeah, 2000, the 2000 squawk, you're right. Probably, well, in the UK, 7000 would be uh, the expected squawk. So I think. We're just going to go straight from here. Right. Is everybody ready? Take off. And where we go. So you... Yeah, they do have charts to work out exactly what power they want to use to take off. But we're just going to rotate at 65. There we go. Into the air. You can do an aeroplane. No positive climb to do. Wind's pushing us to the left, so let's not go towards the terrain. <laughs> there we go. It does have incredible yaw to the left. It's quite amazing. It really surprises me, this aeroplane, how much it wants to go... Sorry, to the right. Really wants to go to the right. That was a bit out of trim as well. Hmm, don't seem to have loaded it as successfully as we did last time. Right, and around we go. I'll tell you what we did forget. Those landing lights. Knew it. That's a bit of an overbank. You'd really feel the G-force if you banked that much. <laughs> okay. So effectively, we're heading east. Let's get those flaps in. Let's accelerate a bit for the climb. Still good climb performance on this thing. No doubt about it. Get the heading back around. So we could trim it. So if I let go, it's because of those propellers. It's trying to constantly go right. So I did try this before, and I remember it basically had no effect. In fact, it seems to make it worse, the rudder trim. But there is an 
Ada on trimmer. Hidden. So that's right wing down. We want left wing down. That is what you need to solve it, it seems. It's worse at full power settings, though. So I'm, I, I'm a little bit anxious of leaving that there. I'll just put it there for now. Let's see how that works out for us. A bit more neutral. Anyway, let us gauge the autopilot with heading and IS. Bring the RPMs back just a little bit. Get a bit more out of the engines. Get up to 5,000 feet, so I must remember to press out alert as we get a bit closer. Tracking. Set the VOR up. I would say it's VFR, but you, to be the VFR navigate, you have to actually you have to be able to see something. There we go. No problem there. And away we go, leaving another island behind us. Lovely. Adam Cooper says, what flight control hardware are you using for this? I've got the TCA Thrustmaster Airbus stick and the Logitech radio panel. Christian says, oh, in this type of aircraft, you turn off the landing lights just after departure. No, sorry. No, those, the landing lights were off on takeoff. They should have been on. So I just turned them on again. <laughs> Rock on. Good to see you. Thanks for coming. Feliz Pascua. <laughs> Excellent. Buona Pascua uh, for the Italians in the chat. <laughs> Hope you're doing well. For those of you watching, if you're enjoying, um, do please hit the like button. It makes a big difference to the channel. Thank you. Nick says, I was a TBM. Unfortunately, I couldn't continue for the rest of the stops. No problem, Nick. Thanks for flying along. Not sure if, uh, if that aircraft there is coming along with us as well. We shall find out. They'll probably overtake us shortly. I don't think there's a way to increase the speed now. Adam says, do you fancy getting a yoke? I don't know if I will. I, I think the joystick's fine. Uh, the honeycomb yoke has tempted me many times, though. I will say that. Dana J says, I was finally able to get an order of the TCA add-on off Amazon. It went out of stock as soon as I ordered it. Oh, no way. I didn't see that. Very good. No, I missed it. I missed it totally. Harry says, why do pilots, obviously not in the screen, also turn flight directors off for landing? Surely they help guide the plane to the runway, i.e. too far left or right, too high or low. Flight directors work off an RLS usually. Um, you're visually landing. If you're doing an auto land, you'll have the autopilot and the flight directors on. If you're not doing an auto land, you're landing yourself. Now, if you in the Airbus, if you're doing an INS approach, there we go. We've got our out alert, so I need to press that. Um, but yeah, if you're in the Airbus, you will leave those flight directors on for the um, for the landing. If you're doing an INS, if you're doing a non-precision approach, we turn them off because they're giving false guidance. In the Airbus, we don't leave flight directors on when we're not following them. Uh, and the reason is they'd be flying just a random track and flight path angle. They're not actually flying towards the runway when you're doing a non-position approach in some cases. Unless you're using final lap mode in, in a modern airplane. There's a 5,000 feet level off. Bring the power back a little bit. Bring the props back a bit more. Try and match up the RPMs a little bit. And we're accelerating. Good stuff. Yeah, so um, just depends on the approach you're doing. But in the Airbus, we, when we're not following them, we turn them off. If we're doing an RS though, you actually can leave them until touchdown. JDM says, did they ever make an amphibious twin otter? Ooh, good question. Good question. I mean, I did. I had loads of great twin otter facts last time we flew it, and I've totally forgotten them all. I just remember the weird fuel system that really strikes me. Right, I think we're out on our own here. Yeah, now we've got our lights on. I'm going to leave those lights on. I'll forget them again in the descent otherwise. Oli Nuts says, just reached my cruise altitude and can sit back and relax and watch the stream until I need to prepare for the departure. Excellent, Oli. Enjoy. The Bravo throttle is excellent. Keep the stick, but pick up that throttle, says Matt. Ah, there we go. Yeah, I've heard good things about the Bravo throttle as well. Equally impossible to find, though, I have found. Okay. Just get the uh, nose over there. So we're doing 140 knots. Ground speed, 145. 
Not bad. Not bad at all. Doesn't matter. I'm, it doesn't matter about the line because I'm tracking it using the VOR anyway. Now Tenerife, totally different kettle of fish. Much busier airport. Tenerife South, obviously, there are two airports on Tenerife. Tenerife South is the bigger one. It's the second busiest airport in the Canaries, but the biggest is the, or the busiest is Gran Canaria, which is where we're going after this. Um, but yeah, this uh, one, Tenerife South, it's the uh, building, or in the late 1960s, they decided they needed to add another airport because the Tenerife North Airport was just suffering from such bad weather. Thank you very much, uh, Alex. Thank you, really kind for your uh, eleven seventy six dollars donation. Hurrah for twin turboprops, says Alex. Thank you so much, Alex. Really appreciate it. Very kind of you. And yes, <laughs> I agree. Hurrah for twin turboprops. Thank you so much. Really kind. And I hope you're doing well. I hope you're enjoying the stream. Uh, thank you to uh, thank you to Alex. Uh, but yes, yeah, so we are um, going to Tenerife South, obviously. So they decided the north had bad weather, so they set up plans to build a southerly or a southern airport on the islands. And of course, in the meantime. This airport was under construction when the that very famous Tenerife North um, accident happened. Very famous. Um, so yeah, it's a real shame because they had already seen the problem and were trying to fix it. But uh, yeah, it didn't happen in time. So there is the Tenerife Island. Weather there. Easterly winds, pretty light. 20 degrees, 1016. That's all good. Let's have a look at the airports. I think we did fly here on stream before, but massive great runway. Um, and let me just check with it. Windows 110. Yeah, so 07 for arrival. Wind slightly from the right. Now we could go and fly the ILS onto uh, this runway. If I was to bring up the charts. Is there any arrival via Tenerife South? See, there's not going to be. These are all, all these arrivals. They're going to be so much further out than we come in from. If you look, there you go. Look at that. We're coming in from here. <laughs> so really, I'm just going to forget all that. No point in me trying to fly any of those. But we could do the ILS for Zulu for 07. Why not? We did a little visual on that last one. You can see we're already coming in here. The Tenerife South VOR is there. So uh, yeah, this is going to happen pretty quickly, actually. Um, let us... I should have planned this a bit sooner. I totally didn't think to do this. 197.074. Let's put it in. 197. The course bar. 074. There's a glide slope above us. Uh, so, if we just follow our heading there, it does actually have an approach mode, so we could get it to fly the approach. We're only at 5,000 feet. 5,000 feet means we need to. Well, actually, we could get down to the platform 26, or we could follow the glide slope all the way in, really. Uh, but yeah, there we go. Then we're going to land and uh, vacate off. Possibly I'll do a little backtrack onto Bravo 3. It says no entry, but that's a no entry for the runway in theory. They wouldn't expect you to vacate this way, but hopefully it's quiet enough. Your mic is on in Maxim. I can hear you. It says aviation forever. Fantastic. How long has it been doing that? I really apologize. It was stuck on broadcast. I've never seen that before. never seen that i do apologize yeah my uh my transmit got stuck f9 i never had that happen so thank you so much thanks aviation forever for for warning me of that i need to keep a closer eye the airbus is very clever it actually tells you if you're doing that hmm yeah we need to keep a close eye right there's our glide slope i'm actually just gonna arm the approach <laughs> now we can't descend with that glide slope until we are a bit closer in no wonder I didn't hear anyone. So let's get the descent going. Let's press IAS for now, actually. We need to follow that glide slope down until we can get over onto that localizer. But we are going to be painfully visual for this approach. Could make a bit more of an intercept effort. Let's do that. One, two, zero. Yeah, sorry, everyone. I, I, oh, well, apologies for everyone on that sim. Thanks, Andy. So, yeah, no traffic coming in. Manta 202. 
uh, straight in approach, 07 Tenerife South. Cool, I'm lucky I didn't get any messages from people there. <laughs> How many airplanes are in the area that could have heard that? I can't believe it. I, I'm really shocked that my keyboard did that. Mm, and there's only there's only a couple of planes around the whole area actually. So fingers crossed they couldn't hear us. Ed Haslam, good to see you. You've missed me transmitting to everyone on a stuck mic. <laughs> So we don't all of that. Time for the descent. Fuel quantity selector. Yeah, we'll stay on norm. It does automatically feed out of the tanks in the correct order. I believe hydraulic pressure check. We did find the hydraulic pressure the last time we did it. Ah, there it is. I think that's hydraulic pressure down there. There we go. Inserting that localizer. Localizer up his arms. I'm just going to add a bit of power. So, right, in fact, I'm going to slow it down. What I can do is just level off here. So let's level off at 3000. Press out alert. So at 3, we can level off and slow down and get ourselves onto the glide slope. Pretty close in, really. There's the runway. Unicorn only covers 20 miles, says Andy. Thank goodness. <laughs> Evening, Mariner Halley. Good to see you. I hope you're doing well. Right, we're level now, I hope. Yep, leveling off. Let's get the speed right back to start down the descent. Uh, hydraulic pressure, caution lights, the ice, altimeters, signs, landing lights. Perfect. Glide slope should go green in a second when it engages. The Alpha is in stock and curry, says Ollie. Oh, no. Yeah, you, <laughs> you shouldn't be saying that to me. Prop levers need to be at max. So if I bring the power back now, it will slow down really easily. We're still nine miles out, actually. So I don't want to slow down anymore. Be here all day. Just to keep 100 knots. <laughs> I can't believe it. I really can't believe that. I wonder why it's happening. I'm just testing it. That's weird. I'm going to have to check it's not my keyboard. I might change the key I'm using. Perhaps I've been using... Hmm. Is there a setting for it? I've never seen that, but I can certainly see that uh, if I press it fast enough, it does seem to um, stick. Anyway, we'll keep 100 knots. Miles and miles to go. <laughs> oh, and there's our colleague. <laughs> oh dear, Ollie. Ollie says free next day delivery with the promo code. Does Ollie work for curries? <laughs> Eboss, good to see you. I hope you're doing well. Yeah, and uh, Mariner, if I didn't say, yeah, I'm all fine. Thanks for coming. Matt says narration on Unicom, the 320 Sim Pilot Store. Exactly. <laughs> My friend had the same problems with AVH Trevor. Yeah, no, thanks for thanks for letting us know. So there is, is that Aviation Forever up there? Zooming in. Oh wow, much faster airplane. So from here, guys, we're going to land at Tenerife, and then it's just going to be another thirty-minute hop. We'll make it a little bit quicker than that over to uh, Gran Canaria and then we'll have done our day's work <laughs> not even close is it but uh, yeah there's certainly something now what I am curious about where's our DME gone it used to appear up here in the Garmin that's where the Nav1 DME should be unless there's no DME associated with this one that is possible This must look terrible. I do apologise, guys. No, honest, DME. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I do apologise for the, uh, the slapdash approach here. <laughs> Ed Haslam says, that engine view was my life for a good few years. There you go. We'll take it back for you. <laughs> Philip, good to see you. 
Matt, uh, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> I really don't know enough. Right. Let's slow it down now. At least now enough to get some flaps out. So we do have a little bit of that. Yeah, a little bit of trim in. So I'm hoping that will make it nice and stable on final approach. We shall find out. Airplanes like this don't normally need to be stable by a thousand feet. Probably 500 feet would be my guess, but I really don't know for sure. There we go. Okay, speed is right back. Get some flap out. Laps to 20. Now we have to add power. There we go, flaps to 30. Get the power on or we'll get slow. 75 knots. And we can let the airplane trim it out and let's let them know what we're doing. The, and uh, Tenerife South Traffic, Manta 202, final approach, runway uh, 09, uh, 07 to land. Oh, it's getting sensitive there. Okay, so same plan then. We've got to get that power off a little bit earlier and just hold that nose up. Hold the nose up. Or we'll land on that nose wheel too easily. And don't be afraid to be at 75 knots. <laughs> right, autopilot's off. See, already I've got too much power on. And we are going up. So I'm not going to re-trim it. I'm just going to adjust the power. It doesn't need trimming. It's trimmed to the right speed. Turboprops are very sensitive you don't have to move the power lever as much for, for the immediate response because they're spinning that propeller. They can just increase the coarseness of the propeller and that's that. It immediately gives you thrust, whereas jet engines, you have to spool up all the turbines and everything inside, so they, they take a bit longer. Still doing 75. That's good. Getting a little bit high. Get that power back, though. Don't do anything else. Okay. Okay, that's a bit slower than before. Let's get the power back. There we go. Ah, oh, I think we actually landed on the main wheels. <laughs> I'll take that if that worked. <laughs> I'm happy just for the main wheels. Goodness me. It is yeah, tough to get that nose up. Good fun. Good fun to try something different. So we're just going to take this first left here. Squeeze on the brakes. And we just whip round here. And let them know we're clear. Random guy, good to see you. Ed says the sounds are very accurate. That's good. I'm glad you can hear it for a start. <laughs> I never know with my audio. Are oh, so Soberprops loud for the pilots? Yes, they are. Yeah, they are definitely louder. There you go. Sounds like that landing worked out. I was pretty happy with that. I'm just pretty happy with the um, getting the main wheels on. Oh, let's get over to that centre line. Quite a lumpy taxiway. So, quick shut down here. We'll be out of here in 15 minutes. That's the plan. So, 35, 45, 50. <laughs> and we've got one more sector to do, guys. That is a bit of an odd <laughs> taxiway. Let's get those flaps up. So yeah, this is a big airport. As I said, second busiest after the Grand Canaria, which I didn't realize. Look at this. This is serious off-roading. Let's just go park up straight ahead here. So flaps are up. Let's get the uh, bleed air off. Anti collision off, strobes off, landing lights off. Where shall we park? Oh, this takes me back. This does take me back to last summer <laughs> when we did a lot of this sort of stuff. Airpather says, I had a short flight in a Hercules with air cadets. It was deafening. Yeah, I can imagine it was. And that's got four propellers. 
Big fuel imbalance, says Matthew. Yeah, so the fuel imbalance is, is by design on this airplane because the tanks are forward and backwards. They're not in the left and right wings. So it actually, if you were to have balanced fuel, we'd probably have the, the CG. It would be a little bit too aft, I think. We should find out in a second. Reg X, look at that. So that must be something fancy scenery anyway. Because I don't think it would... I've never seen default scenery that includes things like that. Must be part of the Orbex. Anyway, just us here. I'm surprised how quiet the Canaries are. People are obviously off enjoying Easter. Let's stop halfway along. Oh, no, we'd actually, no, last, last turn around. Let's do another power back. So we can just park right up. Right, let's stop. Set the brake. And I do not need the piezo heat. Do not need the taxi lights. Let's let's get this checklist right this time, shall we? Can't be that difficult. <laughs> After landing flaps, bleed air, DI, landing light, strobe, transponder, trim tabs. Of course, transponder. Let's like, get back to standby and trim tab set for takeoff that's good we do not want to forget that look how nose up it was yeah that is funny that's about where we found it at the start of the day wasn't it totally different to the last one we were very very different trim on that anyway shut down parking brake is set radios can go off well we're not going to do that uh power levers idle prop levers feather power levers are idle uh prop levers to feather and if we go to the view the engine will keep running and it just whips around at a much slower RPM. Much quieter as well. A lot of passengers think you've shut down at this point when you haven't. Um, and then you sit here in the dash heat. We used to sit here for 30 seconds, letting them cool down. I think it was 30 seconds anyway. Um, while they're there, we'll turn off the generators. Off, off. And fuel levers can come off. So let's shut it down. Can be a bit tricky. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Fuel levers off. Boost pumps off, uh, lights off, external battery, DC control locks. Right, but what we're going to do is we're going to cheat. We are going to get the external power on. And instead of sitting on battery, we'll sit on external power. Get some fresh air in. It's 20 degrees plus out there. Pretty nice day indeed. Let's get these passengers off. Oh yeah, it's got two doors. Look at that. They absolutely nailed it with the uh, the detail. <laughs> uh, what we will do then is we'll disconnect from Ratsim and uh, we'll just do a quick replay. We'll just do the external replay, actually. Um, I want to just see... Trying to learn how to land a Twin Otter here. So you guys <laughs> have to just excuse me while I try and do that. Felt like we got the nose higher on this one, but it didn't look that... Yeah, yeah okay. That was a bit more, even more convincing on the, the main wheels first, so happy with that. I'm sure a twin autopilot could come along here and immediately point out everything we're doing wrong here. You can even see a wheel for landing. I quite like that. That's a great thing in the dash. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I really like that. Right, enough. Let's get this thing ready to go. Oh, it's done the same thing. Okay, it does seem to reset a lot of stuff. No, 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 you open. There we go. If we go into the cabin now, just out of curiosity. Yeah, the doors are all open. Brilliant, 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 brilliant. So, let's uh, <laughs> load it up. Let's do the weighted balance first. So, for this last flight then, guys... It's only that chart we need the we're in Tenerife South we're going to uh, Grand Canaria confusingly called LP which I always think is La Palma for this one we want a zero fuel to 4.7 plus about 600 kilos of fuel so that should take us to um, 5.3 total weight so we're taking up 5.3 tons so let's do that fuel yep hardly burn any there again about 100 kilos amazing just 100 kilos. that's that's the taxi fuel you'd easily burn more than 100 kilos taxiing an a320 around easily 100 kilos would be really light it's funny you just get used to these things and here's that fuel imbalance front and aft tank not such an issue um for us today let's top up the aft tank it'll bring the cg back but we wanted about 600 kilos of fuel there it is then we go to payload we want 5.3 
we are going to be heavy today. 5.1. That could be a bit aft. 5.2. 5.3. There we go. And the CG is seems acceptable. Great stuff. Let's update the overlay. It didn't take long at all, did it? Uh, or it might have felt long to you. <laughs> didn't feel too long to me. Um, diving in on the RS. Great. Love it. GCLP is our destination now. Let me just do the overlay first before I forget. Matter two zero three, yeah. Lost the grandfather again. Rasmus agreed, so we'll uh, we'll do another one with batteries, <laughs> and let's connect. Matter two zero three. Hopefully, not transmit everything. GCTS two GCLP. I'll say it once more. We we'll use we can just use Terry South as our alternates. And we're supposed to cruise over at 5190. We'll go for 5,000 again. Seems silly to go any higher. We do have a bit of a route for this one. We're going to go direct to Conda. Then direct to Lima Papa Charlie. Then direct to GC LP. And to 203. And files. Great, 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 great. Okay. Alan Story, thank you very much, Alan, for your £10 donation. Really kind. Alan says, welcome back to x -Plane. Thank you for a very another very informative stream. <laughs> thank you very much, Alan. Really appreciate it. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope you're doing very well. And thank you very much for your very kind donation. Uh, yeah, we, we did have... What was our last stream? I think our last stream was the CRJ. So yeah, but um, I've, I can't wait to get back in the Beluga as well. So there are a few few x -Plane streams that are certainly on the way. And I think our, yeah, our last video was in x -Plane as well. It was nice to get back in the tow list to do it. Uh, a little video on that, but yeah, it's uh, it's good to be back in it. It is it is great fun, and we've got these these great aeroplanes. Uh, but thank you very much for your donation, Alan. Really appreciate it. Right, uh, let's go. Control locks, parking brake, handles. We know emergency fuel, emergency pumps, fuel selectors, boost pumps, static source, vent fan, inverter switch, deicing. This is not how you do this normally. This is just me um, getting through it. <laughs> uh, right. So the lights I left on actually. So curiously, it says turn them on now, but they don't they don't run. Yeah, because we're not even on the battery. So I was hoping they wouldn't run, or I'd be a bit concerned. Bleed air switches are indeed off. Peter Heat is off. Generator switches are off. So it seems to go into full cold and dark, really. Bus tie normal. Flap handle is up. Fuel levers are off. Propeller levers full forward, please. Oh, so it does remember that. Interesting. Propeller levers full forward. Power levers slide idle. Windshield heater wipers off. Landing lights are off. Ignition switch is normal. DC master on battery. Let's go. Set of battery switch checked. Bus voltage check. Excellent. And caution lights test. We've done all of that already. Fuel. Do we have the fuel we wanted? Yep. Oh, it's it's coming online. It seems to know when we look at it. I don't have Instagram Aviation forever. No. Um, let's just check. I'm not broadcasting this onto Vatsim. No, we're not. Good stuff. Uh, yeah, okay, so that's six, seven, eight, nine, ten, that's about a thousand, so that's about five hundred. Yeah, perfect. Um, bus voltage, caution lights, fuel quantity. Okay, time to start at the engines. Let's close up. Closing up. Perfect. Yeah, if you are enjoying, do please hit the thumbs up button. It makes a big difference. But thank you all for uh, for those who've done it. Really appreciate it. Right, fuel levers are indeed off. Prop levers full forward. Power levers idle. They still don't convince me that they're idle. <laughs> they look much further forward. Boost pumps on, please. On and on. Start switch engine right. Let's go. Is the lighting on? I think the lighting has stayed on. Yeah, I did remember that. Good. So. Start the right. Spinning, spinning, increasing, pressure increasing, all looking good. Let's give it some fuel. So what you're checking here is that this you don't want this to sit in the red for any length of time or you've got a hot start. Or worse, engine fire, but there we go. It stabilizes really quickly. Prop RPM increasing. There we go. And let's start the next engine. Left. 
I suppose it is a good thing this is a quick airplane to uh, to deal with because it's it's got to, it's got to do a lot of turnarounds to make its money with so few passengers. Let's give it some fuel. Good stuff. I think we can. You should be able to see it. There you go. Oh, it's closer than I thought actually. Thanks, Alan. <laughs> Thanks for uh, for encouraging the thumbs up. Yeah, look at that. 190 viewers, 160 likes. That's got to be good, isn't it? <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Start, start, start. Fuel lever on. A generator left and right on. Let's get those generators on. Reset on. Reset on. Last one of the day, guys. And then we'll be uh, out. I'm only going to do the pizza heating and be there now, as you know, because I will forget. Perfect. Okay. Next is going to be pre takeoff. Let us go over to the oh, GPS. Now the generators are giving us our power. I'm just going to go to flight plan and I find it, I don't know, I'm not sure if I need to do this, but I'm going to delete it anyway. Oh, it doesn't know where we are. That's unusual. G. C. T. S. Thank you, Tenerife. From Tenerife, we're going to Condor. Hey, the K worked for us. Isn't that good? <laughs> the default K. I don't know if you guys are seeing this in the same way as me. If there's any lag. Condor, there it is. See, it knows that there's not many points. Canary Islands in section. Or Australia. Yeah, I was going to say Condor sounds like an Australian sort of waypoint. <laughs> and then we're going to Lima Papa Charlie. Going Canary South. Must be the VOR. And finally, GCLP. G. L. P. Perfect. Done. Flight plan done. Don't want to mess around with that anymore. But if we zoom out, well, you can see it roughly, but effectively we are heading off to the um, east. If I go to our airport, get rid of that. We are now going to depart. So we're going to depart from 07. So I'm going to go straight out the way we came. It is a no entry. So that is that, what that means is you can't enter the runway to take off from there. But uh, as it's so quiet, we'll imagine we have special permission to do that. Departure. Yeah, there's loads out here. But, um, well, we're not doing that. Coral, coral. I feel like coral we've seen before. None of these seem to go via Conda. And there's here's the reason why they've all uh, they all have us <laughs> um, going too far. You see, this is in a jet airliner, we'd still be on the SID. Um, so yeah, we're going to just take off and just head round. So that's the rough idea. We're going over to here, and then we're going to go land up at GCLP just to give you guys some context on the direction and so on. Try to remember landing lights before taking off for the first time, says Rasmus. Absolutely. Good point. And he says there's a 737 uh, who is 150 miles out. Okay, good stuff. Let's get going then. So, uh, Tenerife South traffic. Mansa 203, power back um, from the terminal. Going to taxi out to runway 07 for takeoff. Okay. Brakes released. All clear around. Let's power back. No messing around here. That felt fast for a power back. We must try it in the 737. I think we came in that way. So yeah, 737-200. Set the brake. Now, I'm pretty sure the guys that do this just head straight out, but I'm just going to do the flaps now. Flaps to 10. There we go. The trimmer is set for takeoff. Run a bit of a flight controls. And get that transpond on. I'm going to go for out straight away. Trim tabs, flaps, flight instruments, navcom radio. So we've done our routing, um, but we're going first of all to Condor. So we're going to use the GPS takers there. I don't believe I can fix that on the VOR, though. It could be possible. 
Prop levers, full forwards, uh, engine instruments check, bleeder left and right as required, the ice. So, bleeder left and right, we're already done, props are on. Next one is the after takeoff. So, the one thing to do is get those landing lights on, absolutely right. Let's go. Sun starting to set, got those nice long shadows. I do like taxiing and I like flying at this time of day. We'll go for 5,000 feet again on this one. There it is. See, now it runs away. So whenever we taxi out, it runs away. And whenever I land, it doesn't want to, <laughs> doesn't want to move. Tenerife uh, traffic, Manta 203, uh, lining up and taking off at runway 07. Hey, now that's a bit of off-roading. So, of course, we're not going to have to... That chart I showed you was not the uh, one we're going to have to do today because we are already um, facing the right way even quicker. Right, entering the runway. Landing lights, landing lights. Hold on, did I leave them on the whole time now? Is that what we're going to find out? No, that's off. <laughs> I don't find these switches <laughs> very clear at all. There we go, now they're on. And we need to put on the strobes good stuff right we're ready to go plenty of runway up ahead no one on the approach let's go lovely stuff so we're actually gonna head out somewhere over there and the 120 range okay take off Find forward pressure in this airplane just makes it a little bit harder to control. But there we go, 65 knots into the air. We are pretty heavy now. We've got a lot of passengers with us. And away we go. Yeah, it feels a bit more in trim this time than it did last time. <laughs> Let's head out to the right. No terrain issues here. <laughs> Let's get those flaps in and accelerate. I'm going to swap this over to GPS. We'll climb up to 5,000 again. Big wind farm over there, goodness me. Yeah, these are windy islands. Those of you who know them well will know that is uh, very very much the case. Yeah, that aileron trim's really sorted it. I've got, I don't have to put any input now to keep it flying roughly wings level or where I leave them. Let's get, let's go for autopilot engage, head, heading and IAS. Oof, it really does dive down. If I go nav, it will work its way over onto that course bar. As we head over to our first point, Conda, 26 minutes. It will not take us 26 minutes, I promise you that. Up here and back a bit. I think that vertical speed rise, fantastic. Pilots who fly these turboprops will have, I guarantee, really good noise cancelling headsets because <laughs> that makes all the difference when you're sitting in one of these all day. Doing this in the Airbus would probably be less work, although I suppose the Airbus has a lot of setup to do, but it's just, they're so nice and quiet. Major Sango, thanks for coming along. Enjoy your evening. Dinner is calling, yeah, enjoy. Thanks for coming along. Well, 
Wired Rumble, good to see you. Wired Rumble says, I headed out from GCCS this morning. There was a distinct slope across the runway. Right hand wing was pointing down. Not sure if it's my X plane or there is one. Mm, yeah, I haven't been. That's uh, it did seem that tax rate was pretty extreme. Fatty two, good to see you. Thanks for coming along as well. I hope you're doing well. Got a rate of climb, not bad. Thousand feet per minute. Some Bose A20 says Matt. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's a lot of water, isn't it, to be around? I'd, I'd, I'd prefer to be in that Maldives air taxi one. Now, my understanding is that this airplane comes with um, a float edition, but I haven't quite worked out how to get to that. I'm sure I've seen some screenshots of it. Yeah, the Bose A20 is, is a really nice headset, most certainly. Okay, here we go, last thousand feet. Got to remember to press out alert or it doesn't work. And we'll level off and we should see a pretty nice acceleration. Get that time down. 23 minutes. Nonsense. Won't be doing that. Fuel's looking good. So we could feed it all out the front if we wanted to, but I think we don't want to. There it goes. Yeah, a bit worrying otherwise, isn't it? A bit hard to watch. Alan, enjoy your dinner. Dinner was 20 minutes ago. If I don't go now, my dinner will be in the dog. <laughs> yeah, enjoy, Alan. Thanks for coming along. Thank you for your kind donation. Rasmus says, I'm sure your beacon is off. Ooh, very good. We've got the Peter on. We've got the tax light on. Don't need that, I suppose. Uh, but the anti collision, there you go. Thanks, Rasmus. Rasmus has been looking after us today. Yeah, this is... Uh, <laughs> I do apologise for my, my standards today. <laughs> just just wanted to take this Renata for a bit of fun, I must confess. Right, so going to Conda. And then LPC, the VOR. Look at that time. Coming down very quickly. And as we found out last time, it all happens a bit quicker than we expect. So finally then, we're going to Grand Canaria. GC LP. Grand Canaria, 77 feet elevation. Similar conditions, northeastly, a bit breezy, 21 degrees, so lovely. I wish I was there on holiday right now. So uh, we can forget the arrivals. Approach, we're going to land on 0 03. Zero 03 left or right, I suppose, is the question. Either way, there's LPC, so once again, the VOR is on final approach, basically. Hmm. It looks like left. The right has less approaches, which gives me a clue it's less used. Um, so let's go for the ILS Zulu. Zero three left. Ed, thank you very much, Ed, for your four pound ninety nine donation. Really appreciate it. Uh, thank you. Ed says you can't beat the Twin Otter for this type of flying. Thanks for another great live stream and the engine views. What Sundays are made for. Glad you enjoyed it, Ed. Thank you for coming along and thank you very much for your kind donation. Really, really appreciate it. I hope you're doing very well. And uh, yeah, good to see you here. Thanks, Ed. I'm glad you've been enjoying the Twin Otter. Um, yeah, let's give you give you an engine view for your very kind nation. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty typical turboprop view. Same on the Dash 8. It is fun seeing the wheels. The only problem with seeing the wheels is passengers often can see the wheels and therefore they they might decide the tyre looks flat and things like that and, and <laughs> tell you, which is good. It's, you know, it's nice that people are taking the interest, but um, yeah, it's funny. It's, uh, it can sometimes cause cause a few issues like that. Interesting how it's rotating lightly. Luckily the dash wheels folded away for the cruise. 
Mateo says, I was under the impression the Twin Otter was pressurized. I discovered otherwise flying it to look like the other day. Yes, yeah, you might. Yeah, it has bleed air, but that's not going to give you much <laughs> much in terms of pressurizing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Right, what was I doing? Thank you again, Ed, for your donation. So, this is the approach. I suppose it doesn't show us how to get in there from our waypoints, but we're just going to cruise around the south side of the island. You can already see the island coming up. So, I'm not going to get too distracted with that. 199. In it goes. Course is 026. Now, mm, might do that a little bit later. I don't want to go direct to the VOR via the needles because if I do that, uh, we could carve over this terrain here. Although I suppose it could be nice to be a bit... Ah, let's do that. Let's go to the VOR and what we'll do is we'll do the terrain visually. So it's 1150. Because I was hoping to fly a little bit more around these islands, actually, and see the views. Right, let's change that to V-lock. Let's change the course bar to point at the VOR. There it is. So, I want to get to that VOR, which is on approach at 5.8 miles out. There you go. So, it's actually quite a way out. So, uh, oh, goodness me. We don't need to be very... Um, very low at all at 5.8 miles we can be 2,000 feet above the runway quite happily runway elevation is nice and low here uh, as we said about 80 feet so yeah 2,100 feet at the VOR works so that might mean we can sort of scoot in over this terrain and then dive down but again classic Canary Islands where you've got this um, problem with sort of just the terrain just rises around you Right, 140 knots, not bad. So we can activate that next leg. I could do, if I go to flight plan. Oh, no, no, no. It's very easy to get it wrong in this. Nope. Correct LPC activates. There we go. And then close flight plan. Give us a more updated ETA. So only 15 minutes away. Starting to go a bit gloomy. Lots and lots of water to look out for the passengers. Van Raj says, what do you learn in the multi-engine rating? Multi-engine rating is all about dealing with engine failures and asymmetric airplanes. You know, a multi-engine airplane, there's nothing exciting about it um, for when you're flying along like this, but uh, it's all about what happens when one of the engine fails and you're trying to fly on the, uh, you know, you've got to balance the rudder, how do you handle the go around and all that sort of stuff. So that's why multi-engine flying is, you know, it's a separate rating and it's quite a big deal actually. Same with in instrument rating is a big deal uh, and multi-engine is quite a big deal as well. It's just, just such different aspects of flying that have to be taken very seriously, very seriously indeed. That's why when you when you learn an airliner, for your skills check, you know, before you're allowed to go and fly the actual thing, you'll spend most of the time flying it around single engine <laughs> as you prove that you can basically. Right, what else can we do? It's a bit murky. It is a bit murky. That terrain is starting to look higher and higher out the front window. Start at 5,000. That's fine. I don't want to be any lower because, of, as we said, that terrain. Now, I'm sure you can get terrain to appear on this. But whether it works... Yeah, this doesn't work quite like the real thing. I suspect that's the problem here. Does anyone know, is there a add-on Garmin that works, you know, a payware, high-quality Garmin for X-Plane that does everything? I'll be curious. 
You're welcome, Amraj. Thanks for coming along. Thanks for watching. So, what do we know about Gran Canaria? So, this is obviously the, this is the busiest airport in the Canaries. It's the third busiest in Spain. So, it's a, it's a seriously busy airport. 13 million passengers in 2019. Obviously, not so many in 2020. Military has an airbase here, so the F-18s come in and out as well. And it's a big hub for the getting to the Azores and even Mexico, coming from uh, Spain. And also, in the winter months, getting down to Cape Cap, Cape Verde, Capa Verde, depends how you call it. Yeah, good point, Rasmus. Is there any traffic? GTN 750, says HM. So this has the option for the GTN 750, um, but what it, it looks so different to this box... Do you know if there's one that looks like this one as well? Like this, the smaller sort of Garmin? Let's have a look at that map. Let's see what we've got around. We are cruising on. We've got our colleague right behind us. Excellent. It looks like there isn't IBS on approach from Madrid. So there is someone out there. <laughs> but they'll be well on the ground before we are before we are too close. That is noisy, isn't it? Can we get it to go faster, do you think? I am at, I'm actually at It's creeping up. <laughs> Oof, that's going to do wonders for our time. So GTN 750 is the one that you can get. Okay, I'll have to look for that. I'll have to look for that. Great. Let us, for once, for the first time today, run one of these descent checklists. Descent approach checklist. So fuel check set. We have got it set. Yeah, loads of fuel still. Not even slightly concerned in normal. Hydraulic pressure is checked. That's still looking good. Caution lights check. These are all up here. You've got the test on the, on the overhead. Uh, DI says required. Our is set. Signs on. Landing lights on. We left all those on. Next one's after landing. Here we go, reaching that terrain. Now let's see, what is the highest terrain? Oof, yikes. 6,000 feet up there. We're in the 4,000 feet range, so we may have to do a little bit of VFR off to the right <laughs> to keep ourselves clear. Should be nice views, though. Should be really nice views. Nice little clock. Looks like it works. Yeah, very good. I like that. Should have started that for the turnaround. And I've got the ILS on ready to go. It's our backup frequency, 1099. Excellent. Does have a DME. Yeah, 90 frames a second. That's not good for the streaming software. I'm just curious. It looks like it's... Is it running a bit smoother for you guys now? It seems to be running smooth. Chavez, hello. Thanks for coming along. Let's actually do some sort of descent plan here. So it's 26 miles to Lima Papa Charlie, which is about five miles on approach. So we've got about 30 miles to run. So let's descend. Well, really, we're going to be restricted by the terrain. We've only got to descend 3,000 feet to the Lima Papa Charlie. So about nine miles to go. We need to think about descending, but we can go much deeper than three degrees. As we just squeeze in over this terrain. Hi, Jaffet. Let's come in. Engine's a bit hot. Yeah. I've been cheating. I'm just trying to see how fast we can get this thing to go. If we put them there, I wonder what happens, how much speed are we going to lose? I really don't know what the aircraft would really cruise at. Stream is smooth now, says Rasmus. Some light stutters on some of the turnarounds, but mostly smooth. Excellent. Good to know. Thanks, Ven. Thanks, Rasmus. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, strange. Strange one. Oof. 
looking pretty squeaky on the terrain. Beautiful with the sun setting though. Has anyone tried, is it called X-Shade? I think Aerosoft brought out a new shader tool for, for X-Plane. Has anyone tried it? A GNS 530 from Reality XP. Thank you very much. Thanks, Wild Wumble. I have to look that one up. I suppose it also depends what it fits into, unless it just adds as like a acts as like a plugin. Oh, there's no way we're going to do this. I'm sure. We got the radio altimeter set to 500. <laughs> Shadex is fun for screenshots, says Morton. Thanks, Morton. Is it good for just in general? Or is it maybe just for screenshots? Let's go heading mode now. And let's get ourselves slightly around this terrain. That looks a bit more promising. <laughs> and then we'll just cut in from behind there. I'm sorry, Javi, that now I don't know how to speak Spanish. Okay. Mezzo says, can you fly the Concorde? Yeah. Yeah, I've got uh, I've got the Concorde now sitting in the hangar, so I just need to learn it. It's gonna take me a bit of time. I've gotta get I've gotta fly a few planes before then. Certainly. I've got the seven five, seven three seven two hundred, just trying to keep my hand in at all of these planes. <laughs> just <laughs> It's hard like uh, to remember even how to do the most basic stuff on this Twin Otter took me a bit of thinking. There's our colleague coming in behind us. We've slowed down a bit. I do like this scenery though. It's a shame about how hazy it is, but quite nice, quite nice effect. Sven says, do all commercial planes have radio altimeter? Uh, good question. I don't know if it's a requirement or not, but the Twin Otter, this one certainly seems to be fitted with one. But whether all commercial aircraft have to have one, I don't know. To be honest with you, that be a regulation thing. They are, radio altimeters are very, very common though on any any sort of airliner really. Just because they're so, they're so useful. They give you that final, you know, in a, a light aircraft, you get no warning that you're about to hit, hit the ground or that you're getting close to the ground. Whereas the radio altimeter just gives us that extra thing, you know, it just comes to life. It's It's so important on the Airbus. Andy says, awesome, give me a Mateo shout on Discord. We can help with Concord. Thanks, Andy. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to do that. Maybe we'll get Mateo uh, streaming it or doing a video on it like he's done with the uh, the 350. But yeah, thanks, Andy. Yeah, it's going to take me a lot of work. I have got those PDFs to go through. Rasmus says, any chance of similar hops with a bigger L on a one day? Maybe a little longer hops though. Yeah, yeah. You know, this does happen. People do fly these flights in Alan. You know, the Airbus has been used on these shuttling planes around to get them to the right right one of the Canaries. So, yeah, we can do it. Definitely. I've been thinking somebody had asked me to do Manchester and back in 320. I might do that little hop. Just a little hop in that. Um, up to Manchester back could be quite could be quite fun. There we go, nice and clear this train. Although we might have squeezed over it, if you're that low and there's any sort of wind, and there's some quite good winds today, you could get really blown around from these valleys. This could be could be really nasty to be flying an aeroplane over, especially a little one with not as much excess power or speed as I would like. Or I should say excess energy. Thirty two, thank you very much for your five pound donation. Really appreciate it. 32 says, how did, how did you learn all the different FMC? I fired up the Garmin recently, got very lost very quickly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I I, uh, I I struggle with the Garmin a lot, but I've had a little bit of help recently. But it's, um, I'm, I'm not criticizing the Garmin at all. In fact, it's incredibly powerful for, for what it is. Um, and it's quite amazing how they've managed to get so many systems working. But you just have to get used to the logic, and it does take a while. It's nothing like an FMC, is it? It's, it's really really different these different nav pages data field yeah yeah it, it's it's quite something <laughs> so no i have struggled a lot as well buddy don't you worry don't you worry matthew says is there anything in the 320 that is frustrating because it always seems to break or cause trouble there 
Ah, uh, that's a good question. I don't... Th they're generally very reliable. The engineers will probably have something different to say about that. Um, window seat might have more of an idea. Um, things they have to constantly fix. But compared to sort of some of the t other aircraft I've flown, <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's remarkably reliable. It generally, you fly around in airplanes without things that are offline. I know the the bleed air switches and so on, they can sometimes be a little bit sticky. But thank you again, Vati, for your kind donation. Um, Matthew, yep, yeah, that answers your question, Matthew. It probably doesn't, but no, there's nothing. I mean, like in the Dash 8, it was the um, running tests on the de-icing boots. That often took a few goes to get that to work. There are little things, but the Airbus generally is very good. Eboss says, you're beginning to get a sizable fleet over at 320. Airways, yeah, we are. We are indeed. <laughs> it's getting difficult to keep track of. Okay, well, I think we can definitely go straight to that VOR now. Somewhere here. Distance to the VOR. 8.7 miles. We said we wanted to send around 5 miles to go. Let's keep it coming in at 140 knots. I go to IS. Bring that power back. We're going out to 2,000 feet to be there. If I press out alert, will it work from now? Let's see if that works. It is descending. Uh, where are we going? Grand Canaria. Uh, Grand Canaria, Manta 203 is joining to land in on 03 left from the south. Really don't know if that's helped anyone else. <laughs> My Unicom broadcasts are not, <laughs> not great. <laughs> Thank you, Guinea Pig on Glideslope. Thanks for subscribing. Hope you enjoy the video. Vati2 says, the Garmin does what it says on the tin, but in its own way. Yeah, absolutely. It does do it, but you, you it's it's just a different world. <laughs> well, there's another airport down here. I have to lean out the window to spot it. Nope. Thank you for your subscription to uh, Amori. Is there a decent Dash 8 for X-Plane on Microsoft? Certified Dynamite, there is going to be a Dash 8 for um, X-Plane. There is already one, but they're making a new one. Thanks, Scissor 5. Thanks for coming. Um, yeah, they're going to make a new one for um, X-Plane, but it's not around yet. Okay, we're coming through three and a half. That's all looking good. And as you can see, we're still three miles away. So no problem there. What I'm going to do is... Yeah, wind's pushing us through slightly. Let's do that with the heading. Swap over the frequency. You can tune in the ILS on here as well if you wanted to. Course of 026, please. Right, let's get down. Oof, it does dive when you want it to, doesn't it? <laughs> Brilliant. Landing lights definitely on. Props can go forwards. Oh, not like that. There we go. Hopefully it'll level off at two. Look at that. The scent rate is incredible. Over 2,000 feet a minute, you'd really feel that. And as this is unpressurized, that could be really quite nasty on people's ears yeah you would not want to do that in an unpressurized airplane in the airbus if we have to unpressurize it the checklist actually says to try and reduce that that vertical speed right glide slips there it's all working out let's go for the approach hundred twenty knots let's try and keep it hundred twenty knots for now God, 
it takes so much power to keep this thing level. But we are quite heavy today. Anyway, there's a the localizer. So our plan looks like it's working. We should get the glide slope in a second. There's the glide slope, and down we go. Yeah, I'll definitely get the 380 from any builds, most certainly. Yeah, the Beluga really impressed me. Right, and down we come. Oh, don't do that. You'll notice, by the way, if I change the course bar, it doesn't actually stop the ILS from working because we're using the automatics. It would just be very confusing as a, a pilot to try and fly like that, but it doesn't actually matter, whereas, you know, with the VOR it does. Okay. Start tweaking the power back. Oh, and what we should have done. Show you guys where we're going to park. Way too many charts. Utterly ridiculous. It's, it's just... Yeah, too many charts is a real bugbear of mine. When it's done like that and then you're expected to uh, to have them all. <laughs> There's like 20 charts to follow. Okay, so look at that. We're going to have to roll out quite far to get off the runway after that high speed. Oof, they're not going to like us. Might be German Aviation's down here. I think what we'll do is we'll land, backtrack and come off. That's a long odd way. And there's the military stuff over there. Right. Power right back. Oh, the stuff you can do with the turbo prop, eh? This year release for the 380, says Mezzo. Oh, that'd be great. Just reaching our 500 feet radio. <laughs> So probably a little bit sporty. There we go. Flaps are out. Get that power on. It's a good autopilot. Really, really powerful at following this approach. Because that was a lot of flap. That was really, that was really unfair of me to give it. Get the power on. There's that wing view. Some wind turbines. Yeah, really, really nice all back scenery. I have enjoyed it. Oh, no, too fast. Come on, slow down. Same again then. We want the speed right back. We're going to do a short field landing this time then. Try and get off of the uh, the vacating point. Angry Air Canary traffic. Manta 203. Final approach. 03 left to land and backtrack. Too fast. Too fast. Way too fast. You can actually see the trimmer trim up. It does give you that little cue the whole time, which is quite nice. It gives you sort of an input or a view into what the autopilot is doing. They might otherwise be missing. So we're going to get that speed back. 75 knots. There it is. Autopilot off. You want to be at the right speed when you disconnect the autopilot. And hopefully with the right power setting. Otherwise it would just be all we had to trim. And what we might do. We might dip a little bit low. Let's see. Because I, I don't want to be... I don't want to be um, delaying things. with our colleague behind. So let's keep 75 knots. Quite happy with three reds. Oh, I love the lead-in lights. Always make you feel like you're in a big airport when you have nice lead-in lights like that. So we're going to come in. You do this in general aviation. You try and land on the numbers as opposed to on the uh, in the touchdown zone. Not done very often in commercial. <laughs> I'm going to go for max reverse as well. So 75 knots. Power's coming back. Power is off. Hold it there. Hold it there. I think there's touchdown, max reverse, max brakes. And that's that. <laughs> Let us um, zoom around. No mess in here. Probably got our colleague following us in. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I don't know. Maybe it would have been quicker to go the other way. <laughs> but still, we. I think we got those up on that one as well. Manta 203 backtracking uh, to vacate right. We'll be quick. We'll be quick. Oh no, I'm so sorry. That didn't work out. <laughs> oh, disaster. I do apologize. I don't think I could have made it to the other one either, to be honest. But there we go. Right, we have made it. We will have a nice replay of that and the outro music, so don't worry. All the usual trappings of the end of a 320 sim pilot stream are coming 
Thanks, guys. Thanks, Captain. Thanks, Ed. Thanks, Rakon. Thanks, Kai and Jacob. I hope you're all doing uh, very well this evening and hope you have a very happy Easter if you are celebrating Easter. Let's get those flaps up. I've really enjoyed it. Thanks for entertaining me <laughs> or indulging me on my uh, very poor, very poor standards, I must confess. Landing lights off uh, as we just enjoy the, the Twin Otter for a little bit. Got to get some use out of these machines, haven't we? Oh, I feel really bad. Hopefully they just do a quick circuit and uh, come in and land. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, let's get those strobe lights off. Go and park up. What was it called? Reg X or something like that. Let's see if we can find another uh, non-descriptive brand. <laughs> that was a little CRJ. Go and park up near them. Kai says, we made it in memory of the pilot who went around. <laughs> Thanks, E-Boss. Thanks for coming along. Thanks, Ed. Glad you enjoyed it. Yeah. No, I've, had, I've had a lot of fun. Just seemed like a nice use of the Twin Otter. And look at the scenery. X-Plane looking really nice tonight. Very happy with that. Let's go and park up next to the CRJ in honour of our latest addition to the fleet. Okay. Not really sure what this apron's supposed to look like. Look like. Yeah, it's back to running away again. I'm having to put it into reverse to keep that speed under control. Let's get that taxi light off as well. There we go. Oh. So that was that two and a half hours we've been doing this for. Wow, this was a bit of a longer, uh, longer one. But those turnarounds always add up. Yeah, that's the CRJ. What's that? Two hundred looks like to me. Nice machine, very nice machine. I think my passengers will be feeling a bit sick if we kept spinning around like that. Brakes are on. Can we remember what we did earlier? I have a rough idea. Feather the propellers. Turbo prop pilots don't hang around with this sort of stuff. Peter heat is already off, which is good news. Bleed air's off. Um, so those are feathered. Then we can cut off the fuel to them. Turn off the boost pumps. Oh, you can see the shadow of the propeller. Fantastic. Absolutely love that. Ah, it's feeling really atmospheric here. Um, and we can do all the rest, but I'm not going to do that. What we're going to do is jump into the replay. So, yeah, thank you very much for coming along today. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it a lot. And uh, we'll be back with more tutorials, streams coming very soon on the channel. There's no point in us starting all the way back here. It'll take all day to get to the runway. Um, yeah, plenty coming. Oh, I need to disconnect from the server, which is done, which is good. Um, Thanks, Daniel, and uh, thanks to Rasmus uh, and Dougal. Glad you enjoyed it. Uh, Isaac, good uh, to see you as well. Thank you. Uh, so wait, what do we reckon? I, I don't want it to take hours to get to the runway. Something like that. That's going to be okay, hasn't it? We'll go for Ed's engine view or wing view for this one. Hmm. I quite like seeing the propeller, actually. So let's do this one. Let's get the outro music. Thank you very much for the moderators for coming along and moderating. Thank you all for viewing it uh, and chatting and just watching. If, if you haven't bothered chatting, that's great. Just thank you for coming along. Thank you for the likes. Really, really uh, appreciate it. Thank you very much for the kind donations for those of you who donated and for the subscriptions. Um, like I said, more tutorials and we'll get back in the airliners for some from airliner live streams very soon. But for now, have a very happy Easter to those of you celebrating it and we'll see you again very soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.